on select tickets. See savings coupon for restrictions and details. Coming to Allstate Arena February 25th through 27th. I'm gonna take 
to the most dangerous show in the morning. This is What's In It for the Black People Radio. Mays Jackson. Mays Jackson. The most vociferous advocate for black people in the world. For Tosh, I am the host of the Maze Jackson Show, asking every single day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them, Maze said, Mayor Lightfoot, man, we ain't accepting that. We ain't accepting that. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Let's get down to business and go ahead and address the facts. Man, Lightfoot seems more lesbian than black. Rahm Emanuel's another case. He was just as tired. 50 closed schools left much to be desired. Police had internet naked on that body cam. They suppressed the footage so it couldn't touch a lot of hands. Reminds me of that 16 shots in that cover-up. Both of them similar, so I went and dug it up. George Floyd killed. A lot of riots happened in the town. Southside burned and they wouldn't let them bridges down. Grandmother sick, need a prescription and plus a couple groceries. You won't have to travel just to get it now. COVID-19, now he's shutting all the business down. Not enough SBA loans to even give a round. So many failed businesses that you can put them in the path. If you don't survive the pandemic, it's gonna sit you down. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invest in black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System to milk is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invest in black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System to milk is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Shout out to Willie Wilson. Hope one day you get to send it. We need some different players in the game to handle business. So too many shady characters like Madigan and Blago. But when you really break it down, it's typical Chicago. City full of gangsters. It's what the land was built on. Same streets with hood legends DNA gets spilled on. Carjackers out here lurking, trying to get they steel on. Looking for a block to put them Hellcat wheels on. Let this give bogus appraisals a red line. Car crackers out here getting minimal fair time. Enough to seal kids. I stay with the pipe. Right. The Illinois gun laws giving minimal rights. Uh-huh. Stay up on the swivel, make sure I'm moving tight. You know Check all of my mirrors when I pull up to the light. Uh-huh. Pick my homie up from out of town, man, he caught a flight. Right. He was hella nervous, told him, shorty, sure, this is a way of life. Uh-huh. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Uh-huh. Government invest in black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System to milk is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invest in black neighborhoods.
neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that built us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Wake up, Chicago! <laughs> Wake up, world. This is the Mace Jackson Show. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my girl, Ruthie Moore, in the building today. Well, it must be a, a weird day. The only reason I say it's a weird day, because who takes Mondays and Thursdays? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I have to catch myself at least... You think it's Once weird? What's like? What should it be like? Mo- Tuesdays. It's Mondays and Wednesdays. Tuesdays and Says Thursdays. Says who though? Who made up that arbitrary synchronization? The T's. What's the, who is that? What's Tuesdays that? and Thursdays. Oh. <laughs> like it a Monday, flows. Wednesday, it's Friday, a, Tuesday, right. Thursday. It's a. It's a. You know, it's the even days, the odd days. Ah, okay. Right. So there's like a workflow. Like I think of Tuesdays and Thursdays, like in the universe. In the political universe, Tuesdays mm-hmm. and Thursdays are fundraiser days during mm. the week, right? Give you a chance mm-hmm. to get a start, get your week off to a start, and also not interfere with your Friday, right? Your oh, weekend. That right? has so a purpose. So it gives you the opportunity to get into the week, mm-hmm. right? So you, Monday you come down, you be forgetting everything. You be like, mm-hmm. man, I don't got to. It. Monday, if they ask you to come somewhere, you be like, man, if you don't get your ass. But my, Thir- Monday, my Monday and Thursday got a strategy. Mm, what is it? You know, Sleep. No, Monday is like the the start of the week. So, you know, got to come start the week off. Get everything together. For Be the like, week. let me just make sure make get, sure no, I still got a job. No, get everything together <laughs> for the week. Okay. Strategize, plan, right? Tuesday is like the work day, right? And then Wednesday, you know, that's still my work day. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, right? Oh, and then right. Thursday, you be, oh, I'll that's come back to let day. you know, like, okay, this is what went on from Tuesday to Wednesday. I can report back to you. Friday, got to have it Thursday, all. Like Thursday, th- not Thursday, then you make sure that we straight for the weekend. You come yeah, and check to see if gotta, I need gotta, anything gotta, for gotta the plan. weekend. I ain't mad at you. I was I was uh, commenting to an associate um, that while I am not a worker from home, like I like I feel like mm-hmm. I need to see you. Like <laughs> I want you at your desk <laughs> at nine o'clock. But I will tell you that yesterday's flow was so dope. Like mm-hmm. ordinarily, I'm like pulling out my hair because I got to get here, go here, get here, go here, go here, go here, get here, get here, go here. I sat in one spot, and all of it came to me. And then I was within range of my crib, so that after having a long day, I was able to just. <laughs> Be at the house. Mm-hmm. And it worked out really well. I just felt like, but it also was like I wasn't, like half of my day is hoping that I didn't forget to do some, meet mm-hmm. with somebody. Damn, do I have a meeting today mm-hmm. or do I, da 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 da. And boo, people be want to meet with you. So it was, it was, okay. No shade, <laughs> I had a, I have a, okay, so part of your job is now got to be decipher the I have a dream meetings. From the I have money meeting, and I lo- <laughs> like, and we have to have a day. No, we have to have oh, is a there day. A budget, <laughs> right? No, I mean, no, really, because it's like I. What? Well, mm, it was a really interesting thing. So it's like, especially when it's people I like, mm. right? Or you know, what I'm saying, and it's like I don't have, but I gotta, we gotta, we gotta put those on a day. Like we gotta figure out if this is mm-hmm. like a fellowship uh, day, right? I got you. Like, and then that day we mm-hmm. schedule, say, for instance, at TP, mm-hmm. and then it's like it ain't no stress, mm-hmm. right? I could be there, I could be working, I could be come mm-hmm. on in, sit down, keep on moving, but like to pl- pull a plug out the day mm-hmm. to shoot the shush, right? Mm-hmm. It's like I ain't even wait. And it's like, no shade. Do you do the over lunch or is lunch also business time for you? What I'd like to do is knock out the business. And I know y'all like, why are we having an office meeting online? Um, uh, oh, Tenille. Tenille. Actually, Ruthie, circle back with Tenille on that. She will sort help you sort that. She mm. is good at that. <laughs> like, 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, I, I was just, it's funny. So my man was like, we should try out this. And I was like, I'm telling you what I'm not going to do. If it ain't no commitment, I'm not trying it out because I don't want to get used to nothing that ain't going to be there. Mm. So, no, Let's no, see. thank you. No, I mean, it's like, it was funny, kind of. One of my meetings yesterday was somebody having an idea about how about we create a whole media network with that studio that you got. And we could bring, I was like, let me tell you something. I don't want Nam. No, you know what I love every day? Can I tell you what I love every day? <laughs> My favorite part of this day after the show is when Reese come in this mug and start unplugging stuff. <laughs> like, I mean, I remember when it used to be like you, Reese, like after this show, it'd be like, hurry up, get up, get out, get, go, go. Man, I like the mosey on around. I be having meetings in here and everything. I be sitting in here like it's my regular old office, like it's the den, like it's the, uh, what you call it? The um, like uh, the, my man cave. Mm. I'd be like, yes. Now today I'm gonna pretend like I'm a radio host. Hi, my name is Mish Jackson. I'll be charged. I'll be like, yes, one day. Charged? I hear anybody say that. In a minute. Charged? I say I'm charged all the time. Oh my goodness. Charged? Oh, woof. Is it the nineties? Man, I'm charged. Are we back in the nineties. You don't say charged. What's the best? The charged is the best. It, it, Reese, it, it, you it, say it was, charged. It's turnt now, but remember it was crunk. Re, no, nah, Reese say charged. Turnt. I don't heard Reese say charged. You be saying that, Reese. Reese ain't never said charged. Oh, he like yeah in the in the early nineties. Yeah. <laughs> Reese ain't never said charged. Nah. Maybe I'm charged up, but not charged. That's yeah. I don't know. That's like, don't be a hater. It's, it's turnt now. I'm just don't trying to keep it. Be turn. I'll be like, turn or be, turn up. It's T. It you teed up. Lit. 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 I, lit. Is lit. lit yeah, used lit. to mean you was wasted. I, I still lit. do. Still do. Okay, so. Like, no. bro, he lit. Well, oh, y'all ever heard hot and Cooley Brown? No, I heard hot and giraffe's ass. <laughs> People be like, he was hot in a giraffe's ass. I ain't never heard the giraffe, that part of the giraffe. Yeah, ain't never. That's another part I've heard. What? <laughs> is this? Is, nah, I got no don't see. <laughs> you, you were on talking about Reese? Yeah, I got you immediately. I, Higher than giraffe. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly what you just said. Okay, like, so it's a, a derivative. <laughs> it's a derivative. We in the same space. You just... Uh, <laughs> oh, see, I wonder what the original on one was. the ends of the spectrum. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, right, well, you know what? I'm going to stick with yours. <laughs> I'm gonna move to yours, Ruthie. I just, I just don't like saying that word. I think mm. it's just a what giraffe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if you say giraffe, with it's okay. I, no, I don't like saying that word. It's I don't like that word, and I don't like mm. the. Uh, I don't like. I don't like. I don't like words that end with the e sound. <laughs> I just they what? just. Cookie. No, don't <laughs> I don't like no the e. I don't like the e. Like That's the funny. derivative of words that end with like you know how they sometimes like you know they have changed the the vowel from i to a. Right, so you be seeing on TV they be like tatas because I don't <laughs> like the. It, it, I just I have a hard time with some of these filthy words. Do people like? Do people say like these? these some of these words are they like curse words that are just like a little bit. Worse than curse words? No. They're all on limit. Mm, after white women, if you use the C word, they get hot. But that's white women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. They get hot anytime. You, you say Karen, they get mad. Nah. But your Ooh. name is really Karen. Ooh, now that's a, that's a tough one. Karen and Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all nasty. Higher than giraffe. See? I wonder what who was the dude <laughs> that came up with that one. He was like, how can I? Hmm. We need to artificially inseminate these. <laughs> Get a gun. <laughs> All right, I'm through. Bring the ladder. You know, I've never seen that on National Geographic. YouTube. Giraffe? You can find anything on YouTube. I don't think I want to. I'll be scared. 
I be scared. Some of the stuff y'all young people be having these days. You say, I mean, I remember I said BBW, and the next thing I knew, it was. Well, that is not what you nah. said. <laughs> what? What are you some talking about? Broadcast and cooking or something. Right, BB, right, BB, right, BBC, uh, something uh, like that. The uh, British, oh. bro- the British Broadcasting co- Channel. Oh. Jesus. I told you, if you type it in your Google. That's not what. <laughs> it, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Like it'd be stuff. I'd be like. <laughs> oh, how did I stumble upon this, man? Like, not, like fifty what? years ago, that's be like, not what it hey, meant. can you please pass me to suggest the videos, please? I'm just, I'll just play. Let me turn on the parental controls because this ain't gonna work. This is not right. This is not yeah. right. People find, you know, what's interesting? I think people have to find ways to code language now because of like the tech surveillance. So in order to like try to beat these algorithms, people come up with different ways. Oh, to I'd be say funny things. when you ever see like when Alvin Alvin be typing one letter. In each, yes. in each type, yes, like if you read out, Al, if you read an Alvin, like when he about to say some filth, foreign, filthy, he'd be like one letter, one letter, one letter. I still can't believe I met him. Alvin, oh you, you Alvin hey. Norton has been around to he's hey, been to quite a few events. Nope. So shout out to you, Alvin. Alvin Norton. slid on us. Oh well, you can't say see slid. That means get killed, right? <laughs> If I get slid mm. on, oh, yeah, that's another one too. That's, an inter- now, that's you, interesting. Now, I, I used to be like, like, I want to slide. Used to mean you're right. You know, like I, I sl- get in. Be like, I just oh. right. I slid. Like I slid on Shorty. Like I pulled up on Shorty. That, no, yeah, that can still mean right. that. Yeah. I, like I slid in her DMs. Double you know, meaning. I went. That's what I'm trying to say. That's a good one. That's, it mean like a lot of different ones. Yeah, you know. Okay. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, when Tyrone said it the other day, the thing it meant they was gonna kill you though. Yeah, me not too. Yeah, me not too. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I was like, slide on I was, shorty. I was yeah. so, somebody we said, we said we both. slide on shorty. And they said, yeah, somebody yeah. told my cousin they was finna roll him up a bit, uh, roll him up in the wood. And I was like, I would, it passed I mean, to the left. They was like, nah, dog. Mm. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Cause then they was like, I'm smoking on the 20 pound. I was like, you bought a dub, right? <laughs> nah, smoking on the 20. Tw- what, huh? Do, y'all, do they still sell dubs? Yeah. Can yes. you still buy a dub? Yes, but it's just really not economically feasible. It's dang it. That makes no sense. <laughs> right. Unless you just don't got it. But I'm just like, just save your money for a couple weeks. Right, for another $5, you could probably get you another two two grams. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, do they? So do y'all remember when they used to have, like, nickel bags? Yes. Do you remember the manila envelope? No, my debt, but my father <laughs> tells me all the time. Hey, bro, your manila weed envelope. used to come in a manila envelope. It would come out dry. Fresh. Hey, Joe, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. For $10. $10, you I had a whole, you. like, you would like, be intelligent. like, they'll take one of them envelopes, and they'll fold it over, and you'll be like, man. <laughs> and if it was unfold, don't let them get you. Man, you remember, okay, you know how you got the manila folders, the manila envelopes, the big ones mm-hmm. that you put letters in? Mm-hmm. Well, the weed used to come like that. And it would be, in, but it would be a small one. And then you would like, so then you would get it half full, and then they would, oh, so like a nickel would be like, they would put a quarter in there, like mm-hmm. the envelope would be a quarter full, they'd fold it over, then they'll fold it over again. Then when you got a half, like when you got a 10, mm-hmm. it'll be half full, and they'll, oh, that's smart. And one fold. fold. It. Right. And then if it was packed, like if, or if it was like, no then fold. they, no fold, you was like, and it, that's when they had a sale. Like they had a sale, and it'd be like, "Dad, boy," and you like you open that bad boy up, and the seeds would roll out first, then the stems and sticks. Then you'd be like, "Man," then I remember when it used to be like, not me, but my cousin, be like, "Hey, man, you gonna roll them stems?" Like, like it used to be like, "Man, I paid for." Them. It'd be like seeds, stems, and sticks. Must oh. be smoking, smoking. It'd be like, "Pat, pat, 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 pat." It'd be like a firecracker, boy. Pat, 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 pat. pat. Does anybody remember when they started saying like when 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 the the conversion from the blunt from the joint to the blunt? You don't remember that? Nope. I remember the remember when Red Man um made the song How to Roll the Blunt. How to Roll the Blunt. Mm. And that's I, how he did it. That well that actually influenced the culture, huh? It well, I feel like the on the East Coast they was doing it already, but mm-hmm. I remember it's how you roll the blood. It's how you roll the blood. It was a song on the uh, Time for Some Action album. And then I just remember everybody buying Phillies. Because he literally gave you the instructions. First you lick it, then you split it, then you, right? It's literally a song called, and everybody was trying to figure it out. And then somebody, I don't know who it was. It might have been Big Swill. 
Big Swill, he was like the professional roller, but he was mm-hmm. a, the the worst dice player ever. <laughs> I man, I remember I met Big Swill rolling. He, man, I smoked. My cousin smoked all his weed and beat him for all his money and dice the first day. He had to drive back to Chicago because he had lost all his rent money. Came back, we got him again. <laughs> Mom was mad to the mug. <laughs> but I remember then he was like, you remember when people used to be like, put honey on it? And you tried, then remember when they said, if you put honey on it and you put it in the microwave, you're going to die? Remember that? What? Yes. Then everybody was smoking it to see if it was going to happen for real or not. <laughs> then y'all remember when they started learning how to roll cones? Like when somebody learned how to roll a cone blunt, like a blunt that was just like a cone. I never knew that they didn't come pre like that. Like I didn't know you could. I rem- I feel like I got beat. I feel like I came up with the idea of blunt wraps. Because I used to be like, <laughs> no, I really do. Because I used to be like, why don't they just sell us the cigar paper? Instead of the blunt, mm-hmm. but I, I, it, but I you can't really. I, I just gotta say though, like in this whole world in the universe, even though they got all these cones and all these things, it's still something about. I don't know how your cousin rolled, but that is too much saliva and cold. <laughs> You ain't nothing. getting none no way. I, say, I don't want none of that cuz. I'm, I'm straight. I'm, just, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> what is he doing? Ruthie and Ruthie, I went for that text and Ruthie like, Ruthie, are you hitting that? <laughs> <laughs> are you first of all, a real talk, I'm so grateful for COVID. I'd be like, nah, cousin, you get to get your own. Mm. I'd be like, nah, well not me, but my cousin. He'd be like, Man, you we you come. But you you know, then the the funny part is, like when now in the in the in the COVID era, you can't really, it's hard to get played. Because remember when somebody, you know, like, Swift Man, I know people used to hate me. Because, um, you know, I used to roll like, well, not me, but my cousin. <laughs> he would roll skinny bees. Like, Swill would put the whole thing in there. I was like, Swill, you going to put the whole dime in there? The whole yes. thing? We could get two. We could oh. get three. I like, this is a three. Swill be like, this is a one. One man. Whoa. Put the chimney, in. dog. The chimney. And it would be like, we used to call him the chimney. And it would just be like, for real, you put the whole thing in there. Shout out to my hours, brother. The <laughs> whole thing. Like I used to be like, and then that then do you remember? Do you remember when there was no more dimes and it was like a dub? Do you remember when it was like a do you remember the one blunt dub? Do you remember? I remember when that happened distinctly. Cause I remember being like, mm-hmm. "You what? Oh, like that's it? Like it went right? Down. Like it? Yeah, yeah, you gave gram. a dub? Remember you gave him a dub? Yeah, one gram. Hey, bro. I don't. I still don't understand that stuff. I still don't know how many grams. No many. I just know a QP, a half P, a P. And then after that, I look, bro. I tapped out the game. After after the bags wasn't the measurement no more. I was out. Like when mugs not <laughs> like when when stuff in the bag, when just stuff in the bag, being like these pillows. Remember when they would be like, "Hey man, pick which one you want." Like they would have a whole like, and and you would pick and you could come up, cause nobody weighed it out. It come on man, you want me to weigh three hundred dimes? Man, find the right size bag. <laughs> and then you would. And then open it up, and then they'll open up the bag, and you'll be looking through them like, ooh, give me that one, and give me that one. When they had three for, remember, do you ever remember three for 20? Two for 15? Three mm-hmm. for, well, it depends on which one it was. it was. It wasn't three for 20. You get a three for 20 if they was trying to, if they yeah. was trying to get you. Ah, right, three for 25. Three for 25. Three for 25 was the hit. Yeah. But now you can just go and buy from a white man at the dispensary because he didn't took all of the, That's why you support your local weed man, not just tie, y'all, y'all need to stop your good. local weed man. Do not go out there to them dispensary. Hey you Reese, spend eighty dollars. Hey Reese, they be like, uh, "What kind would you like?" I used to be like, "What? What? You, like it? Look, bro, it would be hilarious to me because remember it'd be like some days you be like, man, they got the fire then." Okay, what was the radio station? I cannot remember the station. Remember the hood station that they used to be like the five week. It was the van. It was remember when the BDS had a station. 
You know, you don't remember when the BDs had the uh, radio station? No, <laughs> they had a pirate radio station that it was in. A, they had an antenna. You would see the truck riding around the city, and they had a van, mm. and they would tell you like they would have like where all the five weed spots was. Like people would call in and be like, "You got the five weed," and it was like a what? hood Chicago. Real talk, Real. <laughs> man. Mike Love and the Diz did a show about it on. They had to do one of the dudes who originated. <laughs> You don't remember that? No, he used to ride around in the truck. No, it was a radio station, but they had a pirate antenna, so you couldn't catch him. The tr- the antenna would be riding around the city. It was on the top, top of, of a van. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yup, dog. They would be like, man, it, it, the best weed is on such a... Man, it would be people used to... Fa- like, it would be word of mouth weed spots. Some people would be traveling to go get <laughs> weed from around. Like... That's epic. It, it's kind of smart. And it was all FM radio. Yes, Joe. <laughs> they straight they pirated a radio station. They got caught. But the whole you dig went down because it was like it was a complete mm-hmm. like was they it's the out? same thing. It was that on air. Like you could tune in your radio station and, and people would be like, "Hey, Joe, this is Mikey from the West Side. We got the fire weed at blah 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 blah." And my- it wasn't on social wow. media, Joe. And I'm telling you, word of me. Dog, people would travel to weed spots word of mouth. Like, word of mouth. Real talk. Yes, really. How else would you know? And it'd be like, hey, Joe, you finna go, man. Man. Now y'all running around here. i never forget the first time we went to uh, New York. We were staying with Cootie. But we wasn't staying with them, but we was hanging out with them. And they had the weed delivered. Like, ding dong. Like, they called it up. It was like, ding dong. Bicycle messenger opened up his pack. Had Eric. I was like, "Is wait, you you opened up?" And then I remember taking out the jar, and I was like, "Dag!" And he came in. It was before a glass jar, man. And you, mm-hmm. man, but they was like, "That's one hundred and twenty dollars." What? What? That's when I remember the jump, and I was like, "I'm about to stop smoking." <laughs> Then I hit the, well, not me, my cousin hit it, and it was like, up. Oh. What? Next week, I start again next week. <laughs> <laughs> we fall down, but we get up. <laughs> All right, y'all, this is the Maze Jackson Show. I don't know what the hell just happened right there. Uh, I had a flashback. Uh, shout out to uh, everybody who was tuned in with us this morning. Big uh, shout out. What's up, Ruthie? How you feeling this morning, though? How, good. Uh, we talked about it a little bit. Yeah, I'm good. No complaints. No comp- Ooh, That's what we're talking about. Yes. Hey, man. Um, shout out to Ruthie Moore. Uh, I looked at my calendar yesterday like, oh, my God. And then after, um, <laughs> oh, look, Bob, Israel want to know what happened to the tops. <laughs> hey, man. Tops papers? Mm-hmm. They got them at TP. I but mean, they but, got organic. But who who buying tops? The last person I knew that bought tops was my uncle. He probably still buying tops. If he's still smoking, he probably still buy. Man, I now do you remember when you used to see people who had tops and they have like the the brown lick? Like when they wrote, I, do you, I, I what's so crazy to me is now, I realize that like when my babysitter would be rolling tops and that mm-hmm. like, I understand the smell now. <laughs> and man, you know, was just thinking, and, and and my babysitter. I think I might have had a contact because I think I don't think nobody never let the windows down when we was kids. They was just smoking in the car. Straight up. Man, smoking in the car. Whether it's a cigarette. Man, we all should have been there from secondhand smoke because didn't Mm -hmm. nobody let. You was just sitting in that joke. We was all smoking. Yes, we was all smoking. And they talking about the smoke you was smoking was worse. Hey, uh, uh, I uh, smoked enough Newports, Salem. You have? Marlboro's. Come from people that smoke. Smoking is like a normal part of life for some people and people's families. Back in the day, not not so much anymore. Dang, Ruthie, I could see you smoking. Uh, I could I, see no, you smoking I mean, I'll, not like you know, but we used to play around with them. But never my thing. I remember once I smoked a cigarette like twice. I smoked one when I was five. <laughs> Damn near killed myself. <laughs> never touched another one until I went to college. Mm-hmm. Smoked another one and threw up in the most awkward situation ever. Really? It was terrible. Did that take away yo? Yeah, I was like, this will never happen to me again. I'm good. 
Uh, yep, I am definitely good. All right, y'all, it's the Mace Jackson Show. Uh, let me say what's up to my man, DJ Reese the Ruler. DJ Reese the Ruler, how you feeling this morning, man? You a little sleepy? I know you was, I heard, I heard Reese went across the country yesterday and yeah. back. Yes, man, you know I'm blessed by the best, you already know the rest. Shout out to John, I pulled up on John yesterday at the last event, and uh, I was like, he, he thought I was Marcus. I was like, nah, I'm Reese. And I didn't even know. He said, Reese. He said, Reese, man, how you doing? I, you know, so I'm just like, you know, I'm trying to open up the door. I'm like, I'm good. He said, nah, man, how you doing? So I said, oh, you know, I'm blessed by the people right now, right? He said, that's the answer I wanted right there. So shout out to John. For, you know what I'm saying? No, he's one to hear. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, see, Reese, you got to look, look at that. But he can't come on the up north no more with a socks coat on. You got to leave that at home. Please Reese, don't do that. Reese don't do is that. a Cubs fan. Don't do that. That ain't blessed. That's cursed. This is John. <laughs> Right here, you John, see. Right here. <laughs> see, look, John be charming all the black people. It's funny to me because it'd be like he is the whitest white dude. How you doing, Reese? How you doing, Reese? How you doing? Yo, look, Reese. He, Reese, no, Reese. How you doing? Yes, sir. That's what I want to hear, Reese. Exactly, uh, exactly. What said, just Reese, like that. I know this dude, right? I'm telling you. That's what I want. Imagine, Reese. Imagine me about 20 years ago. Minding my business in my front yard. And I want you to look at John. And I want you to imagine him walking up to me in my front yard when I'm in my front yard, wife beat it. Like back in the day when I was an old man, wife, like I had a house. And he walks up to me, what are you doing with that sign? Think about him. Look at him. And imagine him talking to me and me turning around and seeing him. For the first time, huh? For the first time. <laughs> if you don't mind, you Man, if you don't get mind. your... <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you. We went from that... Because I really was like, who in the hell is this white boy? And that's really not what I was saying. You know what I was really saying, and right? Like, right. Mind my business. Don't mind my business in, in my, my own yard, damn front right. yard. And here come. Imagine that to me and him going into a bar where it's all the post office workers after they off work. And we decided we about to fight them all. <laughs> what? Me and John. And he, I was like, well, I was deciding how we was going to fight them all. And John was like, well. I got your back. I got your back. It's a lot of them. Look, man, we're going to need a strategy here, but I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, Double J, man. That is Double J. That's the dude, first dude who gave me the checkbook. Now, look, it's the Maze Jackson Show. I'm telling you, it's a crazy world, man. It's a lot that's happening in this world. Oh, goodness. All right, so it's Maze, Reese, and Ruthie. We're going to have a good show today. Uh, Ruthie, did you watch yesterday? No, you didn't. Did I watch what? Yesterday? Yeah. A show? A show. Mays Jackson. Oh, yeah, of course. Did you see the uh, University of Chicago? Mm-hmm. She lying. She ain't seen No, it. I did. I, I watched it. You played it a few times. Reese. The forum. We're going to play it. Audrey's question, too, because I feel bad. I was going back yesterday. And mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I be like, rewind, rewind. Uh, Audrey gave a, um, oh, shoot, I got to send Lakeisha Collins, too. Uh, she's coming on too. Uh, we're gonna play Audrey's question. We're gonna mm-hmm. hit the headlines. Plus, uh, State Representative Lakeisha Collins. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw the white boy put his hand in her face on the floor and told her to keep his f keep her his f and name out her mouth, like on some of this. Y'all. The, meanwhile, Reese trying to give passes to the to the people walking down. See, I'm telling you, the Juwan joint. See, see. It's like we give them a give them an inch. Now they, so we're gonna talk to Lakeisha Collins because I need to understand how does the white guy get his hand in her face on the floor of the Illinois House of Representatives? And my thing is, like you straight up, it's like the 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 physical and the profanity and the liberty to use that with a sister, like Ruthie. Can you imagine being at work and a white boy? Walk up on you, put his hand in your face, and say, "Keep my effing name out your mouth, but don't say effing." No. We gonna talk about that because I'm just telling you, it's like there are open declarations of war against black people every day, and, and yesterday I was the bad guy. 
for asking. I don't know if you saw Vladimir uh, Viegas. <laughs> Vladimir Viegas, because I'm telling you, the. the, Wait. the <laughs> Why are you laughing? We're going to talk about Vladimir Viegas when we come back. Look, y'all, it's the Mace Jackson Show. We'll be back. <laughs> Just, you, know, you just gonna take off without me? After this I, break. Get your savings coupon from participating Great Clip Salons and save 20% on select tickets. See savings coupon for restrictions and details. Coming to All State Arena February 25th through 27th. And now, traffic and weather. Yo, who said devotion had to be sad? Yo, check this out. The Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. I want He's making me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. God's going to turn it around. Come all the way with me. Good morning. What's in it for the Black People family? The time is now 6.41 a.m. I'm Reese the Ruler with your Chicagoland area traffic and weather report as we head over to the Kennedy. Oh, head to the Loop is now 21 minutes outbound to a Harris 17. While on the Edens, we got 28 minutes in both directions. Eisenhower with Thorndale to the Loop, 36 minutes, 27 minutes to Thorndale. While on the Stanton, we got from 355 to the Dan Ryan will be a half an hour outbound 38 minutes. The Bishop Ford, 34 minutes, I-80 to the Dan Ryan, 31 minutes to I-80. The Dan Ryan is 16 minutes to the Loop, 13 minutes to 95th. On Dusa Lecture Drive South will be 7 minutes and 8 minutes north. Over to the weather. Today's weather will currently be 27 degrees and cloudy. Today will only be a high of 27 with a low of 18. I'm Reese the Ruler. Happy Thursday here on the Maze Jackson Show. listening to the Maze Jackson show. I'm your host Maze Jackson. Got my man DJ Reese the Ruler. Got my co-host Ruthie Moore in on a Thursday. 
Yeah, it's Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah, that is weird, Ruthie. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, man. here you go, Reese. I've been trying to tell you. I, I feel like you need more days, Ruthie. Here, man. I don't know. I do feel like she yeah. she pulled the, she pulled the move on. And us then days. you pulled a Monday, Wednesday, so you can't really put another bro, day bro. right by it. That's why she did it. Cause then she's going back to back days. You feel me? So she can't yeah, do it. See how she did she the like, yeah, day. She laid it out. Yeah, she laid it out. <laughs> what, what what you think would be better, Reese? Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> 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 nah, nah. You know what? Uh, 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 you see, y'all are just Thursday. accustomed. Y'all are accustomed to, um, to that particular method. I think it's because it is even three days, two days. Well, you know what? I think, I think, I think. Since I understand why, why you come on Monday because uh-huh. of the, our meeting day, you know, uh-huh. it's in a Thursday work. So what you should do is, you know, uh-huh. I'm meeting every other right. So it should be. Tuesday and Thursdays in the time when you had a meeting. No, I can't. I would never keep up with that. I, and, would, and I, I wouldn't know what the hell was. What going about on. Mondays and Fridays? Listen, oh. that, she just spacing it out. She just, she, she just spacing it. Out. <laughs> I don't need you add Wednesday. Uh, you in know, there. technically that's not bad. Monday and Friday, actually Monday and they Friday, they together. Not, Monday and Friday is not actually that bad. That's actually the same amount of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. That might not be bad. What I'm, I'm leaving, I'm gonna leave well enough alone right now. We kind of got a little flow going on, so I'm you not. Miss you, Ruthie. That's all. Um, <laughs> and you know, when Big James called, he always say, "You know, Ruthie, Ruthie, tell Ruthie to come in a bikini yeah, next yeah, week." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No pretty girl. Like he's like, right. he got like, a bikini. Ruthie. That the <laughs> brother called Pete. in this mug. He was like, if you ain't gonna sit in, he did want a, a bikini ba- uh clad woman to sit in your chair while you weren't here. Yes. And he's like, nah, I'll take Ruthie. <laughs> but if uh you gonna do something else, could you get one of them fine pretty ladies with a girl? James there. Turner. <laughs> but no, Ruthie, he is he do. He'd be like, Ruthie, not in that chair today. What's going on? I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna oh. keep it right at two days. <laughs> when you're not there, he just put a pitch on the side. He on put the left a pitch on the thing. The side right, the I'm gonna start putting. I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna get a Ruthie cutout and I'm gonna put Wait, it right, right there. <laughs> Ruthie, what do you think about this? I'm like, I can't come right. Burn it down. It's just gonna say we're gonna make it's a Ruthie doll. Right. It's just gonna say <laughs> Ruthie. What are you thinking? You Reese, Reese. What I want burn you to do? Down. Just cut, tape Ruthie saying burn it down, and I want that to be a clip. So when she ain't here, we be like, what are we gonna do about this? Burn it down. And then what we got to do is get a graphic that goes out with a little Ruthie that walks oh, out. that's funny. Burn it down! <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. It's the Mace Jackson Show. I did not do any headlines. Um, shout out to Dr. Janice Jackson, who uh, Chicago Hope went to Morgan Park High School yesterday and gave all of those students, their seniors, uh, scholarships to attend college. Shout out to Dr. Janice Jackson. I still am a little bothered. I, so it's, I, I feel like I can't, if I say something, then they're going to be like, F him anyway. But, Doctor, you know, I, not Dr. Jackson, whoever was the communication staff, mm-hmm. uh, I do think it was a little callous that during Black History Month, mm-hmm. the, the layout of all of these scholarships, especially if you knew you were going to Morgan Park the next day, mm-hmm. like give us, give us the same props, right? Like during Black History Month, that's historical black, black leader, black woman, does historical black thing by giving black kids the opportunity. She's giving all kids, but give us our month. Give us our respect. Uh, I appreciate them going over to Morgan Park, and I'm so grateful for the scholarship opportunities that are being afforded our community. Um, so all of just, hey, y'all, y'all got to, you got to say something. Like if we don't say something and be like, hey, did you think about Because mm-hmm. white folks will certainly – no, straight up. It, 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 that does matter. Okay. So can I say that without it being a, 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 a diss to Dr. Jackson? Yes, because I think sometimes things are beyond the control of certain people. And so Dr. Jackson know that we support and got her back. So we can say it. She probably can't, but we can say it. Okay. And I feel like Dr. Jackson has given us the, you know, the right, weekend a nod. And so... You know, I think that I hope that she can appreciate us being putting a little bit of pressure, not on her, but now she can say, okay, you know. So I think sometimes that's what people need. They need that level of support so that they can know that black people still matter. Okay. And we we got your back, Dr. Jackson. So we're proud of you. Just tell them people, man. Uh, On the last week of Black History Month, 
Mm-hmm. If y'all's good, then wait. If you were going to do that, then wait a week. Um, did you see Russia moves on Ukraine? I did not know, though, that Kiev was the capital of Russia, was where Russia was born mm. in Ukraine. And they feel like that's their ancestral They want home. it. They're like, and they're going to take it. We're it, the same. Give it to us. Give it to me. Right. Speaking of that, speaking of uh, of uh, Putin, have you seen about Vladimir Villegas? Who is Vladimir Villegas? Uh, Gilbert. Uh, chairman of the Latino Caucus. They are treating the Latino Caucus is acting like Russia, like they acting like a military power. They using their weapons. They ain't got the infrastructure, but they certainly got the weapons. Mm. And they have declared uh, Vladimir Vladimir Viegas has declared that the end of negotiations on the map. We are going to war. Black people still talking about some. Do they know how much it's gonna cost? They like it ain't our money. And if we spend the money and we go to war and we get the land. So are we going to be Russia? I mean, are we going to be the United States or are we going to be Ukraine? We going to get shot or are we going to be the United States and start putting sanctions on the on the Latino oligarchs? Come on. See, to me, if you know if you know that the oligarchs behind Vladimir Viegas are making money at the city, county and state, they should you should cut off the spigot. That's what them sanctions do. That's start I would, with like, the banks. Let me tell you. There would be no way a lobbyist would be uh, <laughs> talking this cash smack and get anything passed at any level of government. If that was me, they would be calling my clients, telling them, uh, "Don't please don't even think about bringing anything in front of us." He don't even think he don't got no fear of retaliation. Mm. So I just don't want to be. See, I feel like you know you. We said we ain't gonna put no troops on the ground, but I think it's time for us to start exercising some economic sanctions. So all the people that's in, the, if you spend money on this war, mm-hmm. just understand who you creating a war with. Now, are we going to be Ukraine or are we going to be the United States? Because Vladimir Viegas is 100% Russian. He is putining it up on us. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he talking cash and he like, I did. And then he went and got some allies. Now he got the white folks on his team. They like, oh, we, come on, I must break you, I'm telling you. So we, right now the Black Caucus has to decide if we're going to be the Ukraine or the United States. See how this is all working out together? Speaking of comparisons, he teamed up with the, with the white folks. Yes. Who is really China. Bingo. He done got with the, he done got with China. Meanwhile, the white folks sitting back like, Hey, but you see how it's all about a land grab? Um, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, I ask one question, and, and they, I don't really feel like my feelings was hurt. And and I think now that I think about the Tamon Bradley thing, mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was like I kind of, because you know after the show, he has, anyway, we'll talk <laughs> about that some more. But Vladimir Viegas has declared the end of negotiations and they are stockpiling. Re- he said, we getting money. We ready to get our message out. We are ready for war. Black folks steady talking about, do they know how much it's going? It's like, they, we don't get that they, they want a war. Mm. Like, we trying to be diplomatic. Meanwhile, I feel like the Ukrainian uh, prime minister like, what y'all waiting on? Do y'all not see they got guns and weapons? And Whew. Okay, though. Shout out to my man, Vlad. Um. I'm just telling you, if y'all occupy our lands, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, are we, I mean, you see the Russians just took over. They just said, we taking this. Latinos, like, we just going to take it. <sighs> Ruthie. It's, it's because it's integral to their continued world domination. Ruthie, did you read? And, and yesterday when I asked at the forum about this same thing, they laughed at me. They straight up laughed at me. The next day in the paper, this fool is declaring war. And we cannot say black. We can't say black. They don't went with progressive. They don't went and got white people and Latinos teaming up. Use, uh, uh, Vladimir Viegas. Will we be Ukraine or will we be the United States? I'm just saying right now. The mastermind for the, the for the Russians, mm-hmm. 
is 100%, not 100%, his business is depend. He is an oligarch. He's a war warrior oligarch. My premise is cut his shoot. See, but y'all don't want to do that. Cause then that see, cause we still don't want to fight. Like they, they, they are counting on the fact that. Remember, baddest man hit my hand. Mm-hmm. You still ain't hit my hand yet. You still ain't hit my. They, we we getting again. All right, it's only so many. I'm gonna take. Vladimir Vegas. He pushing it right. When I saw the missiles go off in Russia this morning, I was like, oh dang. You know, Gil was a military man, too, so he a Marine, so you're a little crazy. You know you're a little crazy if you're a Marine. No trip. Not in it this way. Uh-huh. But you know, M- Marines, like, when you decide if you're going to, I love the Army, because I, I, you know, you say I'm going to the Marines, Joe. Oorah. Yeah. So, My watch Vladimir. Huh? My daddy was a Marine. I believe it. I bet you know how to hunt with a knife. I bet you could sew your arm up. You had a... If you had a wound, you probably could be like on the movies and be like, kick a book. I'd be like, ah! <laughs> Pass me that drink. Give me a swing. It still hurt, damn it. This didn't help. <laughs> Man, did you see on Rambo that time when he, did you ever watch Rambo, First Blood? No. You never saw First Blood? I never saw no. Rambo. What's wrong with you? Ruthie, you Rambo? never saw Rambo? Rambo. We, you should see Y'all Rambo. talking about Kimbo Slice? I'm just playing. <laughs> Ruthie, you never saw like no, you never saw like the original First Blood. Rambo is that what Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Oh, okay, I was close. Was I've close. seen clips of that. Didn't he? When he like, didn't he have like his chest out with like a bullet uh, thing around him or something? That was the that was like Rambo. That was. Oh, okay. I'm talking about First Blood. <laughs> nope. When you never saw First Blood. Mm-mm. When him and Kevin Dennehy. And he went into, uh, and he was, uh, he went in the mine, and they was trying. He was a Vietnam vet, and then he got shot, and then he had to sew his arm up, and then that was when we <laughs> first saw the survival knife. Man, I wanted to sew my arm. I tried to, I tried. I swear, I tried. I stuck myself with that needle one time. and was like, oh, this, 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 this <laughs> nah, what? No, what maze? <laughs> hey, man, we used to think we was, we used to think we was. Uh, there was a time when I thought I was going to the army, and I was mm-hmm. gonna be a Green Beret. Okay, okay. And so I okay. used to practice. Okay. Like when we was kids, we used to run through like we used to have hunting knives. We would go to Umart and you could go in the Chinese store had them hunting knives that they would let your parents wouldn't even know. And then you could screw the cap. It had a compass on the top and inside it had a survival kit. Like it had a sewing kit because everybody wanted to sew their arm like Rambo. Um and then it had like fishing wire and a hook and everything mm-hmm. in it. And then you could take the knife and then you could Hold it up in case you was in the woods and find your way. You don't remember that? Y'all didn't never have no um survival knives. <laughs> Y'all remember when John Rambo pulled out that knife and it was black and it had the si- man. We all went and got them bad boys from the store. Yeah, the Chinese store, U Mart, oh. on the corner right. <laughs> no, it was right around the corner from Dominic's, and it was like you could try a mail order, but they was the first people to have it in the store. Mm. Then we was taking them to school and everything. Mm. It was crazy. That was before they had. It was before school shooters. You're going to be on the news now doing that. It's just school stabbers, Ruthie. No, we did, I mean, it'd be like, whoosh. everybody be outside dressed in their camouflage with their boots, and we'll go to the, we'll go to the, the cliffs. There, huh? We'll go to the cliffs, because then the knife had a saw on it, so you could cut the tree, the little trees down and, and these stuff. Was, and, these was, and this was in, you had this in school too, right? Okay, all right. Because mm. we would go to the cliffs right after school. No wonder we got metal detectives now. Okay, okay, keep, keep going. You know, keep how going. many school shootings, how many school stabbings? School during stabbings. My... <laughs> there wasn't none in Bolingbrook. You're right. I'm just saying. The streets of Bolingbrook, dude, don't you get it twisted. All right, y'all. Um, dang. I was watching Frederick Douglass last night in five speeches. I know. Mm. I feel like my kids are, like, so lucky. Cause that would have been one of them things I would have been like, nope, sit down, watch. But anyway, I was watching Frederick Douglass in five speeches, and it seems mm-hmm. like black people go through the same cycle with leadership, where you like them, then they become part of the establishment, then you hate them, and mm. then it's a diss fest, and then mm-hmm. they, same cycle. But anyway, one of the things that I thought about, I thought about you, and I thought about um, the 
761 Gun Club, and I thought about Jet Firearms Training. And Frederick Douglass said one of his proudest moments was to see black soldiers because they were armed. They had guns. Oh, wow. And they had the ability to kill white people. And it was one of the uh, signs of freedom to him, was one of the biggest signs of freedom to him was a black man having the ability to even hold a gun. Mm. And just think about how they've tricked us on this gun thing uh, and made us be like, oh, how terrible it is. But, I mean, it was like, it was crazy. He was like, to see that soldier Mm -hmm. with that gun and that musk, it was like, that was the most made, Mm. the most American ever. And it's like, the white folks. We was founded on that, right? White folks still be rocking their guns. We be like, don't do do you. But ain't that one of the reasons why they didn't want to arm black people? Because they knew. And they didn't want you to read, neither. It was like, read about this. This stuff ain't, man, it was crazy. All right, um. Shout out to Don C. Uh, you know, I was thinking yesterday, so I ran into Don C yesterday on my means. You know who Don C is, right? Mm-mm. So Don C, if you watch the Don, uh, watch the Kanye G- Jesus, he was one of the people that was a local guy that was one of the early believers in Kanye, one of his early managers. But it was like well, there was a rivalry in Chicago at one point, where like during that '90s and the late '90s, early 2000s, it was like a a marketing promotions kind of rivalry that was going on with all of the companies, everybody doing promotions, marketing. You know how we click up and everybody turned they joint into, thought they was going. Anyway, Don C went on to be universal with Kanye, but then he created his own space and got into uh, clothing. Uh, so then he started, like, he just opened up a store in Milan. Um, he's done, like, all of those hats. Like, he's he did a partnership with the NBA and, and streetwear, but he just became the Bulls streetwear consultant. So he's going to be doing all the design work for the, sh- the Bulls. But he also has been, he's like internationally renowned now, like sort of like a Virgil Abloh, mm-hmm. uh, but more for streetwear. He was at Soho yesterday, and I was thinking about, and it was kind of like he had, you know, he'd been all around the world, and so, you know, you come home, and you know how people be like, man, man. so, so? I just decided today I was going to give him a shout out because I was thinking about like coming home, like after going and conquering the world and coming home and people at the crib be like, man, we don't care. Mm. So shout out to uh, <coughs> Don C. Shout out to Cootie. Shout out to uh, everybody that shout out to everybody from Chicago who has left and is coming back or has left and made us proud. Um, it was real to them. We was out here. It was guns and everything going. We was on it. But it is good to see that we've all grown. Like, it was crazy to be 20 years later. And, you know, you see everybody. And, like, those people that that turned what we were doing into, like, we 50 now. So I can't be mad. Right? And it's like, so I was just, I was just dope. Shout out to Don C. Shout out to Happy. Shout out to uh, Erica. Erk and Jerk. Everybody it was it was a little reunion going on up at the uh, old Soho yesterday. Shout out to Maurice Gunn. Shout out to Sean Cheney. Shout out to everybody was up in the building doing their thing yesterday. I was feeling the kind of way, like OG sort of, mm. OG ish. Like you know what, we did our thing around these pieces, and we still here. It's a lot of people we can't talk about. That's you know. All right, man. Mays Jackson show. I think I hit all my headlines. Oh, hide your kids, hide your women. Why? The Bulls signed Tristan Thompson. No, hide your white women. Right, mess. Thank you. We white good. Women. We good. We straight. You, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Look, y'all like how y'all did that. Yeah. All right. Well, then on that note, <laughs> we'll move on. It's the Mays Jackson show. We'll be back after these messages. Uh, we're going to play. I got some questions. So we're going to talk about a lot of stuff when we come back. It's the Mays Jackson show. The Mays Jackson Show will be back after this break. This is Monster Get your savings coupon from participating Great Clip Salons and save 20% on select tickets. See savings coupon for restrictions and details. Coming to Allstate Arena February 25th through 27th. Stay standing. 
Show. You are listening to the most dangerous show in the morning. This is What's In It for the Black People Radio. Mays Jackson. Mays Jackson, the most vociferous advocate for black people in the world. Let's go. 
Wake up, Chicago. Wake up, world. This is the Mace Jackson Show. I'm your host, Mace Jackson. Got my um, co-host, Ruthie Moore, plus my man, DJ Reese, the ruler, who took the plane off without me. It was an overlay, <laughs> so that wasn't your plane, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I heard it, it in the back. All right, well, then in that case, <laughs> Reese, what I'd like to do now, then, is get the plane, the soul plane, up to 60,000 feet. Uh, let's get this bad boy up, up, up in the way it is, the Maze Jackson Show. Uh, we are 60,000 feet in the air. I want to, um, you know what, I'm going to do something real quick. Reese, switch over. Uh, I am going to, yesterday, I played a lot of video. Particularly of myself, because I do tend to love myself. Um, but yesterday, also at that conference, uh, Dr. Audrey was in the building, and it kind of goes to my social media question of the day, which is, is it time for a black mentality reset? Um, I think oftentimes, Reese. And listening to uh, a lot of our elected officials, mm -hmm. I'm starting to believe that they think they are. Like, I was listening, and I've been playing it back a couple few times, and I really believe that deep in their hearts that they are. They believe that they're doing the right thing. Of course. They think, like, y'all ain't seeing everything that we're doing. And yesterday, or no, two days ago, at the uh, Next Generation of Black Leaders in Illinois Government, uh, our very own Dr. Audrey Tanksley uh, also posed a question. And yesterday I did not play that question. And so today, you know, because I want to give her her props too, I'm going to play Dr. Audrey's question and I'm going to give us the opportunity to respond. Oh, I know what I didn't do. I did not welcome the Saints from WBGX 1570 AM. Thank you all for tuning in uh, every day, Monday through Friday, 630 to 8. Uh, that is when the Saints get here. You can give us a call at 872-259-7474. Plus... The Sinners get here every day at 9 o'clock. They're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. They get here at 6, and they stay all the way till 9. Uh, regardless of how you take us in, I just want to tell you take us in. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you for watching the Maze Jackson Show. Next up is Dr. Audrey Tanksley, because uh, I really want to know, is it time for a black mentality reset? Um, I think it kind of came out in Dr. Audrey's question at the forum for – uh, the next generation of black leaders in Illinois government. So, Reese, you got me queued up. I'm going to go ahead and play Dr. Audrey, uh, Dr. Audrey's question. Let's take off the mute and go. Uh, thank you so much. This was a really great panel. My name is Dr. Audrey Tanksley. I'm an internal medicine and addiction medicine physician. Um, and as we talk about things like healthy Chicago and healthy Cook County, um, what we often see, especially in the black community, is that um, when the you know, 750 million or however many millions of dollars come to the community, they go to the same organizations that are wrought and, and uh, with systemic racism in themselves um, and are not trauma-informed in themselves. And so the care that they continue to give to our community continues to perpetuate the gap that we have in health equity and in you know, uh, uh, life expectancy and all of these things. And so I'd like to know how the city, how the county is looking at new organizations that are directly responding to the needs of the black community. Because we talk about people of color, but realistically, when we look at the data, it is black people that are consistently dying at higher rate, black people that are consistently um, at the lower end of all spectrums. And so I'd like to specifically know how we're addressing that. Um, and not just giving the same dollars to the same organizations yeah. that are not changing the outcomes. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that question. Um, and and you're right. Uh, if we look at the life expectancy gap, it's really um, Black Chicagoans and then that's your sorrow, everybody Dr. else. Um, COVID has changed that a little bit, um, and so we're seeing some trends, but still an eight eight plus year gap between Black Chicagoans and everybody else. Um, we, we're trying to make some changes or reforms in how we get dollars out. Um, I mentioned the Readiness Summit. Um, we have been listening to, to um, a lot of our smaller organizations and what they're cool. telling us are the barriers to their participation um, in the opportunities that we give. So, for example, 
um, we're starting to pilot a cash advance because a lot of times organizations aren't applying for funds because they cannot front the money and we have a reimbursement system. Um, so we're trying to make policy changes like that that will open the door. Um, also trying to think about different ways to structure giving so that, um, again, smaller organizations that have been on the ground doing the work um, can um, participate maybe through another organization. We have a grant right now, um, Healthy Chicago Equity Zone grant, um, that has regional um, grantees, but then they had to work to identify at the community level um, organizations that could be um, in leadership roles. So we're trying to th rethink how we structure um, uh, how money gets out and also think about the policies that make it difficult for um, organizations to participate. But I would say that, that um, we've heard this, the mayor has heard this, completely agree that it can't be um, the same people over and over again, and we have to think as a city, and she's challenged us to think as a city about those barriers um, that um, result in kind of the same, the same old, same old, um, over and over again. I appreciate the question. Uh oh, what? It's the Mace Jackson show. Uh, doctor, I don't, why are you laughing? Because of the uh oh, man. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Such a troublemaker. I'll be I'll, I'll be feeling sensitive about these things sometimes. Mm. I really do. Because, I, you know, I didn't really take it in the way y'all took it. You know, I just be trying to be lighthearted. But, like, I never want to be a character or, like, a joke. Mm. Right? Like, what's in it for the black people should never be a joke. Um, I think I'm going to have to start doing some push-ups so I could be like, Tyrone. Talk with me a V neck. No, just playing. You know the um it's not it's not that it's funny. It's that oftentimes that is people's reactions to being uncomfortable and being unsettled is to chuckle or let out a laugh or to say, uh oh. So I think it's more of a response to them being uncomfortable and they so they play it off as, you know, to downplay it. Which is not okay. I agree with you, Ruthie. I told him yesterday, I said, it didn't even matter like what he said. He could have said bubblegum, bubblegum in the dish. And that they immediately already had judgment before he even said a word. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have a what's in the for the black people hoodie on. Uh-oh. Uh mm -hmm. I was like, that ain't even like, 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 who said that on the discussion? Like, uh-oh. Like, what is that referring to? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's uh-oh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ain't like that at all. I was... Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, hold on now. I got a new question first. What's uh oh? That's all I asked. I'm gonna ask my friend. I got a new question. I got a new right. What what's uh oh? Like fuck uh, uh, you mean? Why do I make you say uh oh? Like what type of mm. nobody else came up here and said uh oh like mm. That she that's what she did. <laughs> she did that. What? What I just said. Mm. People rolling their eyes when he walked up, and she and like this. It's so crazy. Hold on. I see. I want to go back to Doctor Audrey's question, but I do want you to hear that. I do feel like you need to hear this, really, because I needed you here yesterday. I did. I really did. Yeah. Listen. Listen to this. I'm gonna take it back just a little. That's right. <laughs> how you doing? Uh, my name Wait, is Mays Jackson. So we're trying to th rethink how we structure. Um, uh, That's the question. Is it time to rethink how we structure what we do? Make it difficult for but, um, organizations to participate. But I would say that, that um, we've heard this. The mayor has heard this. Completely agree that it can't be um, the same people over and over again. And we have to think as a city. And she's challenged us to think as a city about those barriers um, that um, result in kind of the same, the same old, same old um, over and over again. But they're telling us the same the old, same Here we go. Uh-oh, what's in it for the black people? That's right. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, my name is Maze <laughs> Jackson, uh, and I just have a question. Listen to her um, after I do the question. As next generation black leaders, right? Because when I came here, this was about the next generation of black leaders. Um, I want to know what the future of what you all see as the future of black Chicago, particularly 
as I hear us continually talking about people of color and as we're watching this people of color debate play out in the city council. And additionally, where do you believe we fit as it relates to the rights of undocumented immigrants to vote uh, in the ci in city in municipal elections because we're seeing it happen around the country and it is part of the disenfranchisement of Listen. black people, not people of color. So I'd like to hear a response to that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she showed his head. And look, they laughing and chuckling. Who look wants at that. to take a crack at that? I applaud you, Mays. I think Mays. May's question was loaded, and I, I if he could repeat it, I she wouldn't let me repeat helpful. it. I applaud you on, on that composure. <laughs> it's the Mays Jackson show. Um, is it time that we rethink how we do things? Um, I think it came out in Audrey's question, and I really think it came out in how the Black Caucus members react to me or reacted and the people that were there reacted. And I think it reflects the mentality change that we have to have. Right now, Vladimir Villegas is advancing on the black community. Taman Bradley on the way out the door said, man, we got to get you more included in the conversation because what you're saying is right. Now, again, I see the disrespect, and I didn't see it at the – like I feel like that's part of the reason why I don't like to do this stuff is because it's like it's so many times it's like I feel like Noah because you, mm. you, you in the rain barking. It's like literally raining now. And I think a lot, I don't, I, unlike, unlike our, a lot of our audience, I don't think that the Black Caucus in and of itself is trying to undermine or a part of a conspiracy to take down black people. I think that they are unwitting participants. Like, I think that they have got you so focused on looking over here that you don't understand. Like, again, Gilbert Villegas said in the paper today, we are done talking. We are done. We're done talking. Ain't no more. We know it's going to a, a map. We know it's going to a war. They are trying to take wards based on the question that I asked. Mm -hmm. And the question, Audrey said the same thing. You got this conference of the next generation of black leaders in Illinois government. And the they are still running the old playbook. Like, they are still operating as though the Latino caucus is still some mm -hmm. upstart little group that you still get to pat on the head and that we brothers and sisters. They are mm -hmm. declaring war while we are like, come on in. Is it time to reevaluate who our real friends and enemies are? Like, I, I, I think that we're still saying people of color. I think if you pay attention to Audrey, if you pay attention to my question, if you pay attention to Tyrone. Mm -hmm. Or Gregory. As he liked to call him Gregory. Because he was, he was finessing Greg. Um, you you got to ask yourself, is it time? Like, I think we're still playing in the wrong playbook, Ruthie. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I honestly think that the black elected officials are still operating as though we're in 
19 in 2005 and Mays and Mark and Paul and all of those people are just mad at the black. Like we aren't even at a fight with y'all no more. Mm. The fight is not with you. The fight is to wake you up and be like, they're outside. And, and oftentimes we are so, we are such in an, in a position where we're more inclined to beat on our own people than fight that. Ruth, do you remember external? We got to take care of ourselves while the ex, Mm -hmm. we can't be destroyed ourselves internally while the external threats. And it's, it's crazy to me how dismissive we can be of our own plight in a situation like this. I'm a, It's it's amazing to me. And so I got to ask you, is it time for us to have a reset? I don't think that our elected officials right now recognize that they're on the plate. Mm. Like, I think they like, they so used to being my colleague, my colleague, my colleague. They think they at the table, but they own the table. Right. And I think they, it's like. Ruthie, if I sit next to you and I hold you tight and I be cool with you and we in Springfield and we kicking it and we, mm-hmm. right? But the whole time, I'm really the ops. Did anybody see the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. You saw, you didn't watch the Red, you watched Game of Thrones? Mm-hmm. The Red Wedding. Remember the Red Wedding where, uh, uh, what's the, what's the son? One the son, uh anyway, the dudes that had the wolves. Right? Remember he went in that he was supposed to marry his daughter, he faked them on the daughter, so mm-hmm. they was cool, they had him drinking, kicking it, and then all of a sudden the music comes on and they kill every black every one of them in the room, including the mama, including the kids, they kill the dog. Mm-hmm. But we are sitting at the table like we all good. Mm. Good analogy. This is the Red Wedding. If you have seen Game of Thrones, and if you haven't, go to YouTube and watch the Red Wedding. We are sitting amongst the people that are plotting our death. And I'm saying this figuratively and politically. So Vladimir Viegas has told you Negotiations are over. We are 1,000% sure we are going to the map, and we got our white people with us. And because y'all split, when I tell y'all how this whole puzzle fits together, you're going to be like, damn. So, you know, part of the reason that they're excited about the referendum It's because they know that black people ain't really excited about this vote. Mm. They know that black people ain't got nothing on the ticket. They know black, there's nothing in it for black people this election cycle. Mm -hmm. So understanding that there's nothing in it for the black people on this election cycle. Yes, I want to have the remap battle during the time when black people have the least reason to vote. Because they don't trust their leaders. They not listening to them. So and they don't have the war. They don't have the resources. I'm not gonna talk to you about how this historic state state ballot is going to be a negative, like it's gonna this what happened at the state level politics is gonna have a negative impact on what happens in the remap process. So imagine, and I'm going to take that for at 7, at uh, we're going to talk about that at 8 o'clock. Okay. Because with the depressed turnout, with white folks excited to go vote, to take this map-making process out of the hands of the inside crooked machine politicians, 
Nigga, when you got the when you got the keys to the throne, we like we ain't letting you have it. I told you about how when black people get to power, then they just like Chris Welch. Mm-hmm. Now we don't we want term limits now. Kerry became the president. White guy proposes, well, how about we have term limits now? Mm-hmm. Terry O'Brien was the president of Much Pots and Water Rec for 30 years. Not one question. So now, I, I, I just feel like there has not been a paradigm shift in how, like, being cool and having dinner is okay, but understand we at war. And I feel like they be at the they they be at dinner like, oh, this is my friend. When when Chewy say kill, mm-hmm. all y'all getting killed. How do we help? It's so crazy to me that they don't understand that anytime you empower one of them. It's going to, okay, so let me just help y'all understand. Remember when I told you I took MLI? Mm -hmm. And in the class, they told the Latinos to look around each other and said, some of you are Democrats, some of you are Republicans, some of you are corporate, some of you are. But when the time comes, you all share the common denominator. And all of these people that we see are in play, came from this program. You could talk all the smack you want to talk about MLI, but the leadership of the the leadership of the black community of the Latino community is rolling through their community. Uh Reese, put me on break. I gotta talk to uh Lakeisha Collins because we're gonna be talking to her in a hot second. It's the Maze Jackson show. The Maze Hello? Jackson show will be back after this break. This is savings coupon from participating great clip salons and save 20 percent on select tickets see savings coupon for restrictions and details coming to all state arena february 25th through 27th and now traffic and weather Good morning. What's in it for the Black People Media family? The time is now 7.32 a.m. And I'm Rich the Ruler with your Chicagoland area traffic and weather report. Only Kennedy. O'Hare to the Loop is now 41 minutes outbound to O'Hare will be 24 on the Eaton's Deerfield till exchange will be 47 minutes exchange. Back out to Deerfield will only be 28. On the Eisenhower, it is now 57 minutes. Thorndale to the Loop and 42 minutes back out to Thorndale. On the Stevenson, 50 minutes from I-355 to the Dan Ryan. Outbound will be only 30. On the Bishop Ford, I-80 to the Dan Ryan will be 43 minutes, 36 minutes to I-80. The Dan Ryan is now 21 minutes to the loop, but still 13 minutes to 95th. On DuSable Lakeshore Drive South, 55th to Jackson will be 9 minutes. Jackson to 55th will be 7. On the north side of things, Randolph to Burmar 8, but Burmar 2 Randolph is now 9. Today's weather, it is currently 27 degrees and cloudy. Today will only be a high of 28 now and a low of 18. I'm Reese the Ruler. Now, here's what's in it for the black people here on The Maze Jackson Show. For the black people, for the black people, for the black people, for the black people. What's in it for the black people? You know it. What's in it for the black people? Let's show it. What's in it for the black people? You know it. What's in it for the black people? Let's show it. For the black people. 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 
listening to the Maze Jackson show. I'm your host Maze Jackson. Got my girl Ruthie Moore. Look, we're looking for state representative Lakeisha Collins to come in. Uh give us a call though 8722597474. The phone lines are open. 8722597474. Um I ain't got I'm not mad at Vladimir Viegas. It's like if you feel like you could punk somebody, punk them. Mm. Right? Like, if you feel like you can get the concessions, if they're not going to stop you, take it. I feel like what that's what the gangsters say. If I can't take it, I break it. What they, How they do that? They got a whole little, you, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to stop. Anyway, it's the Maze Jackson Show. Is it time for us to rethink how we do our thing? Who are our friends? Who are our enemies? We need to do some relationship mapping. Relationship maps are important because I'm not exactly sure who our friends are right now. And I'm not sure that our legislators are, I'm not sure that our media is. I'm just not sure. Give us a call. 872-259-7474. Ruthie, what am I missing, kid? What's the alternative? Well, I think we got to decide that. I think we got to decide. I think we got to take a realistic look at where we sit in this fight and really identify who are our allies, who are our enemies, who are who are the abs, abstainers. Man, call in. The number eight seven two two five nine seven four seven four. Give us a call. Reese, you get like get called. Look at the call. It's the Maze Jackson show. Give us a call. Eight seven two two five nine seven four seven four. Usually you put up a sign that say callers. Callers <laughs> saying it's open, like, like it's open. Oh, I thought you were saying it's calls, man. Okay, open up the phone lines because I want to talk to Lakeisha Collins. Uh, Lakeisha Collins is eight seven two two five nine seven four seven four eight seven two two five nine. Seven four seven four. Um, Reese, I should. I'm expecting a call from uh, Lakeisha, State Representative Lakeisha Collins. So be on the lookout for that too. Uh, I don't know if you saw the story about State Representative Lakeisha Collins, uh, Ruthie. Looked it up. Uh, but apparently, she was on the floor of the Illinois House of Representatives when a white member felt that it was okay for him. Dang, I hate when they do this. Robot, how you asking me if I'm not a robot? You the damn robot. <laughs> Please click all the trees. <laughs> Good God. And then when you be clicking all the trees, it be like it ain't the trees. <laughs> yeah, a little verified thing. You right. Or the little stuff that had like the letters and it be, uh-huh. be like, bro, I can't read Write that, this man. code. Like, like, I don't know what code. this say. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I really want to understand. Let me see if I can find this clip real quick, and then we're going to set it up. We'll set the clip up for um, what happened. Hold on. And then, boom, close this. Let's go here. Reese, get ready. Switch over. Um, We are going to play a clip of what transpired last week in Springfield. This is after kind of all the action that happened. This is towards the end of it. But then after we explain, we're going to play the clip, and then after we play the clip, we're going to bring in uh, State Representative uh, Lakeisha Collins, who has been a longtime listener to Maze Jackson's show. I'll tell you all that story when we get when, when, when we get that a little bit later. But right now, um, this is the 
aftermath of the disrespect of State Representative Lakeisha Collins. Uh, let me see. I got the volume up. Volume is up. Here we go. Let me start it over. That is the aftermath of State Representative Lakeisha Collins after uh, Republican State Representative Steve Reich. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to tell you the story. I'm going to let, uh, on the live line, we have live from Springfield, State Representative Lakeisha Collins. Uh, look, Representative Collins, welcome to the Maze Jackson Show. How are you? Good morning, Mays. Um, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. First of all, it's crazy that you have to come on the show under these circumstances. I got to tell y'all, uh, I ran into Representative, well, back up. Before she was Representative Lakeisha Collins. <laughs> she was Lakeisha Collins and she was getting on the plane. And we yeah. was on, where were we going? Where were we going? To, to New Orleans. To New- I was going to a, camp, a conference. You was going to New Orleans for a conference, and I and she, and so this lady is on the plane, and she she come back and she start talking to me, and I'm like, who? What is it? She tell me she listened to the show, the whole thing. <laughs> then all of a sudden, I'm at a party this summer. I think we had State Representative Curtis Tarver's party, and she like, I thought she was because you know she 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 went in the Art Turner spot, right? And so you know my my cousin, my nephew. Uh, Aaron was running and so you know I, I jumped in the race for Aaron and so I saw the, I saw we were standing on the porch we kicking it we having a good time having a drink and she said I, I listen to the show all the time I said you a lie she said uh huh you remember that time I was on the plane and I came all the way back from my road just to say something and then I ain't talked to you since then because I thought you was gonna act funny <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, we were on that porch, and after our conversation, I opened up the doors. I really wanted to be part of Black People First, too, but that's a whole other story. We'll talk about that. But I yes, yes. was super, it was it was one of those conversations where, you know, where you feel like, man, that's, that's somebody that in the future, if we ever have the opportunity to work together, you'd be looking forward to working together. And I think we said we were going to get you on the show, and, you know, everything gets crazy. But when I, I, I got to be honest, I saw this this thing floating through Capital Facts and I never stopped to read it. And then I stopped and read it and said, what? He did who? Yeah. What the? Wait, stop. So back up. Tell me exactly what happened. Because uh, did I hear somebody put their finger in your face and curse? So uh, this Tyrone. Uh, Gregory. Uh, uh Gregory. Uh. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, black men, I want you to take a moment and I want you to pay very close attention to this story. Representative, tell us what happened to you uh, last week in Springfield with one of your non-colleagues because that that wasn't no shit, no colleague. Excuse me. Sorry, Saints. That wasn't no colleague. That ain't nothing that no colleagues do. So talk to me about what happened. Uh, okay. Um, well, one, I want to say good morning to Ruthie and uh, Reese. Good morning. I watch you guys every morning as well. Um, but what I would say is that this, so last week we started session at, on a Tuesday and the Republicans decided that they wanted to, you know, do a protest and not wear their mask inside the chamber. And for folks that don't know at home, we set, you know, a set of rules at the beginning of every general assembly where we have to follow those rules in our chamber. And so they decided, hey, we're not going to do this today. And for me, I have a son who's at, who has asthma, right? Um, and today is his birthday, Antonio. Happy and birthday, so, Antonio. Um, happy birthday, happy birthday. Thank you. And so, so I was a little bit pissed off at what I saw going on, right? And um, I, you know, requested to speak on the mic. I addressed what was going on. And I said, hey, 
if they're not going to follow the rules, then they shouldn't be in here because they're putting us all at risk. And so um, the next day, nothing happened that day, right? But the next day, um, I requested to move a motion. So this is where we take a vote on removing those members from the chamber. And so back up Tuesday, it was only like six of them. But then Wednesday, it was not, it was eight of them or nine of them. And um, I withdrew that motion because we were taking forever. And we all know that when it's deadline week, you got to get your bills in and get them out so that they can be read on the floor and move to the second chamber. And so um, I withdrew the motion that day. And I was really upset about that because I'm like, they're trying to slow down our process. And we know that this session was going to be short because, of course, the election year. Um, and so Thursday, when the altercation took place, I, I just went all the way through. I called the motion again. I called out nine members. Um, and we voted to remove them off the floor. And so one of the members that I called, which was Representative Wright, he sits a little bit behind me. And so because we have the majority in the House, some of us Democrats move over a little bit in their section. So back up. Row. Let me let me back up because this is one of the points that I was confused about. And I think it's important, guys, mm -hmm. that you understand this. So in Springfield, the, the, the Republicans and the Democrats sit on separate sides of the chamber. But because there are so many Democrats yes. in Springfield, some of the Democrats are forced to sit on the Republican side. Does that make sense? So, like, Correct. imagine if you, like, y'all all in the lunchroom and your whole squad is over there and then you got to go sit at the white table. Okay? So I just want to put that. And the white people don't want you at the table. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, and it's like it's like two roles of, of black magic, right? Black men and women excellence, right? And so um, he sits a little bit behind me. And um, I didn't see that he had put on his mask. Um, and so I guess he was a little bit upset about that. And we went to caucus. Republicans left out the chamber. Democrats left out. I stayed in the chamber only because sometimes I do that. I mean, we're, we're Zooming, you know, so I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to sit here. Forget it. Because you never know when they'll come back. And my, Representative West was behind me and he was in there. And Leader Evans, he sits, of course, on the Democratic side, further to the, the windows. And so he was walking up to me to, you know, see if I was okay, because that debate got really heated. I don't know if you, you know, um, seen any uh, coverage over that. Uh -uh, you need to send that to me and I'll play that back. But we don't yeah. have that. So, so now back up. I want yeah. y'all, let me set the scene for you all. So imagine you in the lunchroom, you have to sit on the white side. Right. Everybody else is leaving out the lunchroom, but you you've settled into your side on the thing. You kind of figured yourself out and you everybody leaving out to go to another meeting or to switch classes. And you sitting around behind by side yourself at the table, still on the white side of the room in the cafeteria. But you're there by yourself. Right. You got two brothers that are in the building, but the you are there as a solo black woman. The rest of the people in the room are white are men. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. And so, um, you know, Leader Evans, he comes over. He's acting like, hey, you're okay. You know, you did a good job. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. But then the next thing you know, this tall, and I'm trying not to curse because I'm a custom politician, but this tall guy, um, Stephen Wright, if you know him, he's like six, 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 seven, heavy set man. How tall are you? And he leans over How tall me. are you? Back up. I'm five, three. I'm five, five three, three, six, six. And I'm sitting down. And I'm sitting down. And he says to me, keep my name out your mouth. And so I'm like, you know, I chuckled a little bit because I'm like, okay, dude, <laughs> where are we going with this? And so then he points his hand in my face and it was so close to where mm. if I had not moved my head back, his little dirty finger would have touched my nose. And so he said, keep my effing name out your mouth. And so at that point I jump up because I'm like, wait a minute, are you effing serious? Mm. And so Leader Evans, you know, immediately move in between us and Representative West is going behind him to pull him back. What really ticked me off was the fact that even when these men were trying to pull him away from me, he was like staring me down, like I hate you type of fear, right? Um, and he was still trying to come back towards me as if he was going to hit me. So yes, I felt threatened in that moment. And it's just like the fact that you had the audacity to do that or the privilege to think it was okay 
to step in my face, cuss at me like that, and then you know threaten me to keep my name out your mouth, out my mouth. So nope, the back up, um, back up, back, 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 back up. Tell, tell how it went. He said what? Don't you don't got to say the word, but you up. say I, what he said, but don't say the word, but you can say he what said, he said. Right. He said, "Keep my effing name out your mouth," and that wasn't the first time he had said it. But he kept pointing at me. So, you know, even when Leader Evans stepped in and said, hey, man, hey, man, back up, back up, he was still coming towards me. And, like, even Maurice, and Maurice is kind of tall, he was trying to, you know, pull him back from behind. And it had got to the point where Leader Evans was, like, pushing him, you know, away. But he was still, like, coming towards me a little bit. And when he realized that I was, like, extremely upset at what he was doing and calling him out on it, that's when the cameras were rolling in. And I guess he just felt like because other people were walking in from our side, you know, like, let me just back away. But but if they were not there, I honestly believe that man would have hit me. And I told him that. So I need to stop right so, there. So let me back up. We here. So this is the this. Let me back up. The challenge, and I want y'all to understand this. Regardless of what your thoughts are regarding what our caucus is doing, that is unacceptable. Right? Like that is unacceptable. And the fact that a grown white man, 6'6", felt that he could walk up physically and intimidate her, lunge, or even say keep your effing name. You are elected official in government. This is at the Illinois General Assembly House of Representatives. This ain't the sidelines at the Michigan versus Wisconsin game. But I tried to explain to you that white folks think that they have a liberty that they can take with black people in general. There is a invisible force field that they think exists that protects them as they assault us. That's why it is different, but it ain't different because they feel like they can take liberties with us that they wouldn't take liberties with. So when you see a five foot nine white guy step to a six eight black dude and a six six black dude talk to step to a five three black woman, the mentality is the same. They do not have any respect for your physical person. Now I need for y'all to understand that you got a six foot six white man who has decided in his mind. When everybody else is gone, that he's going to approach her. If she were, if there were no other people in the chamber, it's her word against his. And guess what he gets to say? I'm white. Hmm. Now, Representative Collins, mm -hmm. where are we now? Because do you still have to sit by this dude? Yeah, I sit in the front, but um, I'll tell you this. So after all of that took place, um, you know, we have black doormen and every last one of them, you know, walked up to me and said, Representative Collins, I'm letting you know right now we're watching from all angles. Ain't nobody going to put their hands on you. I've had um, our black caucus men, because that day, you know, Chairman Buckner and a couple of our caucus members, they were on remote, <clears throat> but they were immediately calling me. Um, you know, checking up on me. And so uh, they forced for him to have a public apology mm. and he didn't want to do it. He said he wasn't going to do it. He said that he tried to offer me an apology that day, but, it, you know, he was told that it wasn't the right time. And I had to remind him that it's not the right time because you violated my, my personal space and I felt threatened by you. And the thing that people don't understand is that you don't know other folks' stories. Because I feel like even if he'd known, 
that I was physically, sexually, verbally abused as a child, right? Um, I don't think that would have mattered to him anyway. <laughs> and it's playing out right now, right? And I, I can get into that a little bit, but it's still playing out right now that, yeah, we could tell our stories to, to you know, our, our colleagues, but at the end of the day, it's that privilege of, I don't give a damn. I'm still going to do whatever I can because I can do it. And so, you know, he did whatever you want to call it, an apology on the floor. Um, I felt like, you know, let's just put it behind us. Uh. But, uh, but unfortunately, that's not what's happening right now. Because even yesterday, right, the, the same day that we did the, he did the apology, I still had to remove three more Republicans for not wanting to wear their mask, Right. And then yesterday, as I'm presenting bills, bills that are simple, right? There shouldn't be a debate about putting money into child care or reforming DCSS or, you know, giving, um, enforcing the Lab Poisoning Act, right? But yet you have white women, white men who are trying to debate me on the floor to insult my intelligence, right? That That's just what these folks do. So... And you see a play throughout history. So I don't know where it's going to end. I just know I'm more aware. Um, but I am thankful that, you know, the brothers in the caucus, our speaker, like they stood their ground. Um, but, but I know who has my back and who doesn't. So let me say, I'll say that. So let me do this. Um. I don't believe. Let me let, see, guys. This is this is the, this is. I don't. I'm not gonna get into the politics. Remember, my boy. I'm not gonna get into the politics of this maze. I'm not. It's like Gregory. I, I, so I, I don't. I I don't. My thing right now is not the politics of it. Let me just let me just be there. I'm not mm-hmm. going to talk about the bills. I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about is Steve Reich has already put down his marker. Right? The fear, the threat, the intimidation, and the fact that, again, he felt comfortable enough to mm-hmm. even do this because he fears no threat. Now, I, I recognize that your colleagues, black colleagues, because you know the first thing I said was, where was my dog Cam? I know he wasn't going to let that happen. Right? Um, I knew he wasn't going to let that happen. So when you told me he was remote, that made me feel good. I know Marcus ain't going to fight because he's a referee. Right? But I know he, he – but, you know, Marcus ain't no little guy. and he. So we know you were protected physically uh, from harm. Let, let's, so let's not throw anybody under the bus and say – but I think that there's another component to this that black men, I think y'all need to hear. I really say this because I have a wife, right, also, who is a public official who people think they can take liberties with. Now, as long as it remains in the political sphere, I kind of got to chalk that up. You suck at water. Damn, I can't. I'll beat your ass, but I can't say nothing. Right? But when it, like, I'm finna what what you finna do? I better what? And and you cursed with it? See, I feel like this is what I'd like to do is broadcast live from Springfield and have a black men's convention. And then what I'd like to do is lobby Steve Reich. Like I'd like to I'd like to put together I'd like to have a black men's rally in Springfield. Just for the issues that concern black men. Mm. And one of them is this white boy who felt the need to, who felt that he could, and, and, and I'm saying, I want to be waiting for him in his office. And I want him to say, talk that tough shit you was talking, excuse me, church folks. But talk that, because here's what they know though. Because the law say that if you put your hands on them, then we go to jail. 
So they passed mm-hmm. a law that says if you assault an elected official who threatened, so do we have, does he have a restraining order? Do we have something going on? Because I'm just telling you, I think that we have black concerns. Black men should have black concerns that we want to address with him. As, as citizens who have the right to lobby their government. Mm. And imagine when he goes to his office. And they're like, uh, stop, representative, you, 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 have, you have a group waiting for you. See, that, that's the type of stuff. That makes people feel com- That is Representative Hold on let me say this Thank you to everybody yeah, I would, I would hold, on, hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on Thank you to everybody from WBGX Who is tuning in us with, on 1570 AM Please join us on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch Because this conversation will continue uh, We are talking to State Representative Lakeisha Collins uh, She was physically threatened and intimidated By uh, a white member Of the Illinois General Assembly In the Illinois General Assembly Chambers What we gonna do What do we do Go ahead uh, representative you were gonna say something Before I started speaking Yeah so I will say that um, You know Chairman Buckner Man thank I thank him a lot Him and our speaker because You know I don't know what they did (laughs) Behind the scenes but I do know that They sent him a letter That was leading up to the discipline you know, of course, according to our rules. And when I had the meeting with him and the speaker and, you know, of course, the leader on his side, um, he was just like, well, I don't feel like I should, you know, have to do that publicly. I'm being threatened. Tell him to tell Tyrone you know, and all of this stuff. And I told him because he tried to say he didn't say it. And so mm. when he was done talking, I told him, I said, you know, you did say it. You said it a couple of times. And I'm not accepting anything less than a public apology. We did it in the public. I want it. I want this apology in the public. And your threats that were made to you or by whoever have nothing. It, it's nothing on what was done to me. The things I was I was called, right? And I also think, like, even in this space, um, you know, being an elected official, being a black woman, period, no matter what job you work on we're disrespected the most and we're criticized the most and we're, we're labeled as the aggressive black woman, angry black woman. Um, even when we're told like, Oh, you strong, right? Like even the response from my colleagues, some of my colleagues, right. It's the whisper of you, you held your own. Mm. Like don't try to put a pet on my back and grab it. Don't send me a text message telling me, you, you know, great <laughs> job. What, what was a great job about being, attacked by one of our members because had a black man done that Ooh. So Ooh. Ooh, been lynched. they'd have say, been getting men, lynched that's all I kept hearing our black men say if that was one of us right so I commend our chairman I commend the black man that stood in front of me I commend our speaker for standing their ground because I felt alone from the day I got there just seeing the way you know, the privilege that just swarms around that chamber, right? Like, it, it, it's ridiculous. So, yes, it has changed my mind frame a lot. Like, I, this whole, you know, we got to compromise. Gotta, I ain't compromising. I'm not compromising. I'm not going to be silenced. I'm not going to um, turn the other cheek. Mm. I'm not doing any of that. I did that shit from when I was five to I was 13, and I found my voice to get out of my situation. I ain't silencing myself now Mm. because I still, I still go back to had they not been in there, then what would have happened? Because he was angry. He admitted that he was angry. I want the same treatment as my non-black colleagues. Mm. What? I do think like what would have happened if that was a, you get what man. I'm saying? Uh, no, like, no, that's... Oh, they would have went down. Oh, no, they would have had... They'd get a rope. Get a rope. Yeah, so I want I want the same treatment. And yeah, I'm not so. too aggressive. Black women speak with authority. <laughs> it's, it's, in our, it's in our DNA. Hmm. It's me telling you that, that my community deserves more. 
is a threat to you. Me talking about being black and living in this, this skin every day is a problem with you because that was where the heated conversation came from in that debate. It's because I called them out when they tried to call me weak for getting them removed. Let me ask you a your question. Your racism is showing. Your privilege is showing. And if you're mad at me for, for, for simply saying that, you know, it, it's for simply saying all of those things, then that's your problem. Let's do this. I want to, you hold on one second, uh, Representative. Reese, bring the second in. Bring him in. Um, Ty. See, man, this, 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 this why I can't be. We we, we got to get something together. On the live line, I got my man, Brother Tyrone. I told you I'm going to have to get in the gym, y'all, because they be laughing at me. Ty, they be like, they be all tight. Ty, what's up, man? We Can we have a convention down in Springfield, man? Like, I want to go to, man, I want to go no to do. It's long over. <laughs> it's long over, too, because I'm, I'm about to, because I'm just say this from the top. Uh, we starting the progressive party for the disenfranchised. Right and PPD pack. I'm not playing no more with this uh, politics crap because it's clear that our elected officials don't respect ex felons. Right, we have the biggest voting block in this state, and it's time to mobilize that voting block for one to get a lot of these people that don't represent our interests out of office. And I'm gonna start local to attack and, and, and remove one of the, one or two of these aldermen. To show them we're not playing with them, that anytime I'm, I'm gonna get to our sister, but it's all leading up to this. Anytime mm-hmm. we can have a black caucus, bro, and, and and we get all the filibustering from Sister uh, Lifeford and, and, and the Toy Hutchinson, them, and we we, we 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 got locked out of that whole cannabis thing while we still get locked up every day for cannabis, bro. We can't trust our elected officials to serve us to fight for us collectively. Now, as it relates to our sisters, it's absolutely no way. And I often wonder what our sisters, do they have men? Do they have fathers? Do they have brothers? Do they have fraternity brothers? Do they have uh, 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 any of that, man, that stands on the front line? It's because it's always, when it comes time to this type of stuff right here, the upper Negroes and no defense to our sister, she she a soldier. Always know how to call the ex cons when when and the thugs when we need to do some stuff, right? When we need to stand on some stuff, because a lot of our professional men are too cowardice and too weak to stand up for our women. This is why even after our sisters and the disrespect that they received from the Asian nail shops and I had to go through and throw bricks through their window to let them know no black woman is to be disrespected in our community, in our family. Period. Whether she my sister, whether she someone's else, sister, mother, her, I mean, a, a wife, daughter, a, a mistress. I don't care. You do not put your hands on our black women. And as it relates to our elected officials, this is the problem. They have such a disconnect with the community that we don't even know stuff like that even happened to our sisters. We out here on the front line fighting for rights and justice all day, every day for our women and our children to just to be able to live free in Chicago without getting shot or contact. Bro, now you get a white man standing in a chamber that always propagating the morals, the decorum, and the standards while judging us as though we the doggone uncool in the business. Sister, that's why you have to stay in tune, and I'm not saying you not. Because if you was in tune with me, I would have already been at that man's office, and we'd have surrounded that office already by now. And that's the problem. We don't have enough communication, internal communication. And and I'm appalled. I don't care about people with the Speaker House, I mean, Speaker Wealth, all of them, you being nice to them. Can my man? But at the end of the day, they never pick up this phone and work their inside, outside game and say, hey, man, one of our sisters been disrespected. You know we got the decor. We can't be out there. Brother Jack, call us because they so disconnected from us. So that's supposed to happen. That's supposed to happen because that's God well said, wake up, fool. 
your election, your election official, your title. Do not uh, absolve, uh, absolve you from the the pressure, the discrimination, and the disrespect that black people receive across the state of Illinois and the country. So That's hopefully, great. this starts the conversation made because we most definitely organizing on the ground. We have to show them that. Uh, uh, we have to be represented, and we're not going to tolerate no one disrespect. Well, I have a, you know, there's a lot of sisters that that's in position that I got an issue with because they got an issue with us. But I would never leave her out there even with our issues as a family. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going about. in. That, and that, and, 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 and brother, that's, that's where I'm at, right? Like, you know, we can get this, we can get played. That is not happening. That's just not happening. So, Representative, so Ty, you know, I, I feel like it's the same thing. I'm not the, I don't got the muscles, right? I ain't the, but whenever it's a problem, whenever somebody is in a challenge, the first place they come is to us. Not, and I'm not talking about you, Representative, because I literally saw this story and went bananas and was like, oh, no, we got to, we, no, hell no, hell no. Now, we ain't, because we have internal conflicts, we will not allow white folks to be assaulting us so that when we finally do get our act together, there ain't nothing left. We're not having that. So uh, whether it is through our media, whether it is through our organizing, and I, I got a funny feeling that, Ty, on this issue, we could put a couple busloads and go down there. And I'm just saying I want no the white boy. I want the white boy to wake up. And had to come to his office and wade through all the black people. And I, I, I man, we, I, I, I want him to wake up and be like, there's, you wasn't just talking to her. We heard what you said. Talk that, talk that shit now. And I'm saying, I ain't the toughest dude, but I'm just telling you what ain't finna happen. Mm. I'm gonna tell you, I ain't the toughest dude, but I'm gonna tell you what you ain't finna do. And we gonna have to, man, brother, man. we gonna have to figure that man, out. Man, look. Look, I've said it too many times, and I wish they would listen. And we, you, just like you said, what we do, mark us. We turn, we turn over the table, not because we, it, we're not turning over the table because white folks are not listening. We turning on the table because black folks, state keepers, house negroes that's in the doggone position to serve their community, always leaning towards, oh, uh, what's in it for all of us? See, that's the that's the that's the problem, bro. So now when we stand up, we look like deviant thugs while they look like the 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 the, the uh the future leaders, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. And so so we have to we they look like the future leaders. They not lead nobody in these streets of community, but they the, the white folks that declared them the future leaders, right? So what happens is this, bro, we have to we got to realize we at war, man. We've been at war. The, the, if when you destroy the black man and the boy, then you essentially can do what you want with the black woman, bro. I've been, been trying to tell y'all. I've been trying to tell y'all. We not gonna accept it badly. Or let's talk. Let's organize. Let's do what we gotta do, sister. We got your back. Now get made. Give my information, but we got your back. And uh, sister, you you ain't this ain't nothing. But you know, apology is not enough. So we got to create a round table, a circuit deal with the systematic stuff and the internal and the innate crap that's in that man's heart to make him do that across the whole Republican Party's Jesus. heart and line. We got to get at the heart of the issue that makes that Trump think he could do that and there will be no consequences from the black community or black men. Wake up, black man. Get y'all child ass out of bed. There it is. Hey, Representative Collins. Um, yeah. I recognize yeah. that as you all are in Springfield, Reese. Uh, I, re I recognize that you all are in Springfield. That's why we gotta have different branches of the army. It's like, but we gotta all be in one army, right? And it's like we can't. Everybody got a role to play in this space, but we gotta make sure that we got an ecosystem, sis. I'm gonna just tell you like this though. That's just unacceptable. Um, Democratic, Republican. Whatever it is, ain't nobody finna be up in your face telling you what they gonna do. Mm -hmm. uh, not, 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 and I again, I promise you, I am not trying to be Tony Tough, but I tell you what, that's not that's that's not acceptable. Um, it's just not. And so 
you tell us. Well, first of all, I'm gonna reach out to you offline because I want to talk to you about some other stuff as it relates to this and how we can do it. But how can we be of assistance to you? How can we help you uh, as you make it through this process, uh, Representative Collins? You well, have, I know for me, uh, in in situations like this, normally you know you hear the story and then it kind of disappears. I'm not letting it disappear. This is a, a moment to organize, right? Um, for too many, for, for often too many times we allow things like this to happen, um, even in our communities, right? And, you know, we rally, we shut things down, and then it kind of like goes away until the next occurrence happens. I'm not doing that. So I'm going to keep speaking out about it. I'm going to keep standing up, for, you know, about this issue because when does it stop? Right. And, and Tyrone's right. My title does not stop me from being discriminated against. It doesn't stop the racism. It doesn't stop, you know, the disrespect. Right? Was there a unified so response? Was there a unified no, response from the I, caucus? I, hell no. It's, no, it, it's the truth. It doesn't stop it. It, it, it. it doesn't. And he was right. So... I am using this moment to make sure that, you know, we do something that's long term. When we talk about systemic racism, it just doesn't stop at a title. I didn't think that getting in this position and being called a state representative or honorable state representative, that I will be untouchable and that I'm more superior. That is the reason why I challenge the rules. And that's the reason why even after that, whatever you want to call it, because it really wasn't an apology to me. Um, I, I did go in motion to remove them again. Because, again, we're lawmakers. How do we expect other people to follow the law, but we don't follow them? Right? Man, I'm going to tell you. That was the statement that I was trying to make. And I'm going to say this. The statement so, I'm trying to make is ain't no white boys running around here, sticking their hands in no sister's faces. I'm going to let you have all the diplomacy you want. You can, have, you can be as diplomatic as you want. No white boys should be walking around here sticking their hands in, in no sister's faces. Period. Period, point blank. That's great. Period. And, it, and, it, and, and everything else, that's all love. That's, that's what y'all do. But this whole concept of, because again, the next thing it'll be Carrie, right? Then the right. next thing it'll be somebody you care about because they don't care about exactly. you. And so I'm just saying like this, we got to nip this in the bud. Since from the moment that we talked on that porch, you had a brother that, man, you asked Ruthie, man, I can't just watch. I, like I, I'm just not a watcher. And when I read that story, I was like, Oh, no, nah, we're going to have us a convention. I'm going to be broadcasting from Springfield before this thing is over. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to be in his office, and I'm bringing the black lobby. Mm. We all registering, and we going, we going to see we going to see Steve Rogers. Steve, because we know you listening. <laughs> we do. It's not over. You ain't want, you're going to be begging for an apology. Woodstock. Don't nobody care about Woodstock. Like, but man, no, I'm just saying. Like, no, think. No, I mean, I'm just saying. Think about you, nah, you was walking right. around talking cash shit, talking cash shit, cause you ain't think nobody was gonna say nothing. You thought that this little woman over here was gonna be able to be abused and take it. That's what you thought. That's what you thought, and everybody said, "Oh, oh, oh, you be Rosa Parks." Mm. And you, 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 man, nah, man we, we, we out that era. That, 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 that shit is over. That, that thing. Now, ain't nobody trying to hear that. Ain't, mm. And, and I'm just, I'm, I, I, I certainly hope that we have seen the outrage from all of your colleagues. And I hope that all of your colleagues are in solidarity and we don't really expect nobody to be talking crazy when we come down there. Right, cause so when everybody running around talking about, ah, oh, here they come, we coming for you. Uh oh, 
We're coming to we're yeah, coming to get that. your back. All right, y'all, yeah, it's the Maze I Jackson show. All right, I gotta take a quick break. We'll be back after these messages. It's the Maze Jackson show. Thank you. Oh, hold on, rep. You hold on. I'm not gonna hang you up. I you hold on. But I got to take a quick break. The Biden administration is releasing what it calls a new strategy to fight domestic terrorism. Following a 100-day review, federal officials are now laying out a new plan hoping to deter, detect, and prosecute domestic terror. They went to the Capitol waving their flags and looking for smoke. He was out there looking for justice. They was over there looking for votes. Ashley Babbitt was with him and told all the people that nothing could stop us. She climbed through the Capitol window, breached the security, and called a shot, bro. The media say she a veteran. They paint the picture to make her look greater. But she did Disrespected the same country that she served that makes her a traitor. They was fighting police, resisting arrest. On God, I couldn't believe it. I guess blue lives only tend to really matter when it's convenient. Hey, these are the times we witness in history. All because they didn't get a victory. United States is so contradictory. We get equal rights, that's a mystery. Politicians, they more like magicians. You know they got tricks up their sleeve. We point out the flaws that's up in this country. You know they gonna tell us to leave. Somebody try to help me understand it. Always seems like a double standard. They be out here leaving us empty handed to certain Rights, we are not granted. Uh, the media is the culprit when it comes to the comparison. Cause when it comes to race, they always changing up the narratives. Terrorism. They say you a patriot, call you a hero. I call it terrorism. And that's on the real. You know what we know, I say it's terrorism. They say you a patriot, call you a hero. I call it terrorism. And that's on the real. You know what we know, I say it's terrorism. They say you a patriot, call you a hero. I call it terrorism. And that's on the real. You know what we know, I say it's terrorism. They say you a patriot, call you a hero. I call it terrorism. We still out here trying to get our reparations. But the government pump faking out here hesitating. I'm out here trying to keep my peace so I keep meditating. The media make us look bad, they taint our reputation. Look, it's so sad, it's so sad that COVID causing toe tags. You claim you so patriotic, but you ain't wearing no mask. You out here wilding with your bag of flags and showing your ass. You I wanna be part of some type of revolution so bad. Look, you talk revolution and constitutional rights, homie. I guess we forgot about back in the days when all of the business was whites only. Yeah, yeah. George Floyd got justice. Juneteenth got much respect. They made it a national holiday. Man, it's all good, but cut the check. They're giving out all of these vaccines. Putting it in you like caffeine. Was it all in the part of the plan? I bet money like DraftKings. It's land of the free, home of the brave. 1776, we wasn't free to 1865, so we wasn't part of that shit and that there's terrorism 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 back to the maze jackson show you are listening to the most dangerous show in the morning this is what's in it for the black people radio maze jackson maze jackson the most vociferous advocate for black people in the world for Ruthie Moore, for Ty Stroger, I am the host of the Maze Jackson Show, asking every single day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them, Maze said, Mayor Lightfoot, man, we ain't accepting that. We ain't accepting that. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Let's get down to business and go ahead and address the facts. Man, Lightfoot seems more lesbian than black. Ron Emanuel was another case. He was just a sire. Act. 50 closed schools left much to be desired. Police had internet naked on their body cam. They suppressed the footage so it couldn't touch a lot of hands. Reminds me of that 16 shots in that cover up. Both of them similar, so I went and dug it up. George Floyd killed, a lot of riots happened in the town. South side burned and they wouldn't let them bridges down. Grandmother sick, need a prescription and plus a couple groceries. You gon' have to travel just to get it now. COVID-19 now he's shutting all the business down. Not enough SBA loans to even give around. So many failed businesses that you can put them in the path. If you don't survive the pandemic, it's gonna sit you down. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked is so bad, we got lactose. 
Eagles. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Shout out to Willie Wilson. Hope one day you get to send it. We need some different players in the game to handle business. Too so many shady characters like Madigan and Blago. But when you really break it down, it's typical Chicago. City full of gangsters. It's what the land was built on. Same streets with hood legends. DNA gets spilled on. Carjackers out here lurking, trying to get they steal on. Looking for a block to put them Hellcat wheels on. Let this give bogus appraisals a red line. Car crackers out here getting minimal fed time. And I'm concealed carry, I stay with the pipe. But Illinois gun laws giving minimal rights. Stay up on the swivel, make sure I'm moving tight. Check all of my mirrors when I pull up to the light. Pick my homie up from out of town, man, he caught a flight. He was hella nervous, told him, shorty, this is a way of life. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System to milk is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods. Neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that built us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Wake up, Chicago! Wake up, world. This is the Maze Jackson Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Oh, Lord. Is Representative Collins still on the line? Representative Collins, I want to give you the opportunity to close. I'll be like, man, I, you know, in the middle of the show. It's all good, though. It's all good. Welcome. Welcome back, uh, Representative Collins. I'm just telling you, I'm not cool with um, what happened. Um, I appreciate all of the political correctness, um, but sometimes that's what the white <laughs> folks rely on. Right, they rely on. I talk about this all the time. They rely on socially awkward situations. So the re- the reality is, when I apologize, you're just supposed to accept it. No, fuck you, ain't right. apology. That's how I feel. Like you, you like. Right. Can you imagine if that was a white guy, a black dude in the gas station? Can you imagine being black <laughs> in Woodstock? Can you imagine yeah. being black in Woodstock and Steve Reich pulls up to you? You imagine what he says to the black kids at the at the football game when they miss the touchdown? Nah, you're not going to... What happens when he gets the black kids alone? Nah, I'm not I'm not honoring that. So I'm just telling you, Representative Collins, and tell your colleagues we come into Springfield. Don't come down to Springfield talking that smack, talking about some... They always blame it. We can't... We coming to see Steve. We coming to see Steve. We, we'll deal with our other business at a different time. But when we come to Springfield, everybody should be like, that's... They're here to, to do what y'all can't. To be clear about what ain't gonna happen. That that so no funny faces, no y'all see it. We coming because ain't nobody finna be assaulting no black women while we around here. And that's me and the professional black men. I ain't got the I ain't got the muscles. But I tell you what I ain't gonna have. Mugs around here feeling like they can White men who know damn well if we see you outside, if you ain't had this force field, <laughs> I'm telling you, these white people force field got to come down. They feel like they got a pass to do anything, and you got to think about what he really thought about, and you get put him in 1863, what he felt he had the right, right. to do. Man, please, cracker. It's the Maze Jackson show. Representative Dane, nothing, nothing, nothing I said is should be attributed to you. I said it. Now, Representative, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to close because I got some other things I gotta talk about. Plus, I gotta get some Negroes because we have to come down to Springfield. And I'm finding some. And matter of fact, I'm not finding Negroes. I'm about to find me some niggas. Straight up. You know what? Straight, I'm finding me some niggas. I'm talking about the ones where you be like, no, 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 you can't do man, man, if you like the ones I can't e- I can't even I can't even control like I just want to let the gorillas out. Yeah, you can't, you can't take them nowhere. <laughs> and we going to Saputo's. Oh my God, we going to we we going to JP Kelly's. We going everywhere. We that ain't going to be you ain't ain't going to be no ain't going to be no travel ain't no third rail. They going to be taking the tunnel. Ain't finna be no walking around. I ain't finna be no bar hopping that night. Cause we spending the night. So come on, we'll see you at we we'll see you at the Abraham Lincoln. 
Oh, you want to be at the Hilton? Oh, see, see, see. I'm just saying. We ain't even got to touch. We just going to sit at your table. We going to get your lobbyists and you going to get your, your it's going to be a lot of lobbyists buying a lot of drinks that weekday. Because they're going to keep them calm. And we coming. Oh, no, we coming. We coming. And then what I want you to do is I want you to get us a, we want to go see the speaker's house, the office. Right, and then we want you to get us a meme with JB too, since we got <laughs> we got some other stuff. But in the meantime, <laughs> with meantime, we want we your guests, right? We want you. We want to go my sit guess. up in. The, this is what I want you guess. to do, right? This is what I want you to do because we're gonna go in the chamber, and we're gonna sit on the Republican side, right above where he at. And I want you to do like you know how they be like, and we like to welcome the niggas. I want it on the board. You know what? <laughs> Them D E M D E M the niggas is here. They done let the GDs, the foes, the moes, everybody is in the dope. You laughing? You know what, man? You laughing? I'm serious. Right now, I'm saying. I wish I could see your face right now. Look at the camera. I know you're serious. That's why I said you could be my guest. Thank you. Thank you. We ain't, we ain't, we, 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 we only came to disrupt the white. We just came to make the white people uncomfortable today. That's all. What are they doing? Mm-hmm. Hey, did you? Oh, no, you ain't. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. You know how everybody be trying to run out the Capitol? We're going to be at Stratton. Mm. Oh, we're going to be at Stratton and mm-hmm. all the elevators. All of them. And we're going to do the walkthrough. You know how you go down on one end of the building and be all the Republicans? We're looking for Steve Reich. Oh, damn it. <laughs> They've let the GDs in the door and the with the buzz and the it, oh my god. Uh oh. Right. <laughs> then they're gonna be looking, they're gonna be like, what do you mean? Lakeisha's my friend. They gonna she gonna he gonna be calling he gonna call you for a beer summit. I'm telling you now, and if you go to the beer summit, uh-uh. we cutting you off too. Uh-uh. Now tell them we coming to the steak nah. fry. Tell them we coming to the steak fry. Nah. Yep, they ain't gonna like that. The steak fry, y'all, it's off the chain. They they be frying ribeyes. You know what? I, I we coming. Oh no, we coming. <laughs> then we go. Uh uh-uh. uh. Now you know I used to be down there, so you know I know all the spots. But I'm gonna you know be. What? I'm, I cannot. I'm coming. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to say like I really. It's this really changed my my perspective. It really has. I mean, I saw it when I first got here. You know, a year and a half ago, but I, I just got to move different. And I've always been like a, a wild card. So I just have to just look at everything from a different angle now. Come on, join but the game. You are my guest. Make sure you, make sure you bring Ruthie Moore. Mm-hmm. I'm down. <laughs> and, um, Turn it down. I'm, oh. I'm dead serious. You so, have a, yeah. you have, look, this is what I want you to feel like when we come. Like when your cousins from out of town come, when somebody been messing around. And then they, and, 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 mm-hmm. and your cousins from out of town come and they, and you got them nigga cousins. We go, nigga cousins. <laughs> Tell them. I, they going to be like, they go, and, and I want, and look, we want to be able, you know, when the brothers, because I know the brothers at the chamber doors, we going to be like, fam, you know how I be like, look the other, just, dog, you, you wasn't here. You ain't even know what happened. You, you just, man, just go the other way. So I'm just telling you, we coming down to Springfield. We are going to have, we're going to go lobby. We want to lobby Steve Reich. Maybe stop by Durkin's office. What did Durkin say? Um. <clears throat> so, so for me, I don't know. I mean, Durkin, he he made a statement when we had that meeting um, that this was unacceptable. He said it on the floor too that it was unacceptable. Um, but again, I don't. Did he censure? I don't him? like to be politically correct. I don't like to be politically correct. I will say that it is unacceptable. I'm not taking. You know what? I would have apologized <clears throat> the same way that I would have done last week that you let me. It's not an apology. So I'm definitely not over it. Oh, he said, I'm um, oh, sorry you I'm felt that way. On this, on this. That's how um, I be doing. He said that. So he his, said, his sorry you felt that. I'm sorry you took it that was, way. Right. I was angry and mm. I shouldn't have went over there. You sit you over there. It they- got nothing oh. to do with you coming in my space. Right. You know? So sis, let me just tell All you. That we got to work together. When we get the work done, we can work together. We can we can do that. But when it, <laughs> it when it comes to a point where you step into my space, that's something totally different. Mhm. I'm telling so, you. 
That's why y'all. I, t- I tried to tell y'all when y'all was around here telling Jawan he could let the white boys stop him in the line. It's different. It ain't different. They see you. They see you as nigga. Do what I tell you to do. You know your place. I'm here to no tell doubt. you. I'm not letting. Don't you say nothing, right? Because they'll be done branded you. Oh, she done joined the maze crazy boot, right? Then be like next thing they'll be talking to you like oh. Maze, you know I told you, Maze. I told you at that party that you know. Remember when we were talking and some guy was like, um, he crazy or something like that. And I'm like, so what? Because he care about black people. You sure did. You don't look, I don't know who that guy was, but he said something like that. And I'm like, nah. She sure did. Because he care about why we can't talk about black people. Right. That, that's why she that can't be by herself. Yo. When they were like, uh oh, what's in it for the black people here? <clears throat> it To me, it's a total disrespect. Everybody else to talk about their race and, and what's happening in their communities. But the moment we say black folks need this, black folks need that, it's a problem. It's a problem. It yeah. shouldn't be that way. But people don't look at us as human beings either. Mm. They're- they look at what they see on TV. And I represent a community like Rondell. Come on now. They look at all the violence, but they ain't looking at the black boys who are actually going to school, who are going off to college, who are... That community itself ha- has hurt in it. People ain't hoping no more over there. They taking matters into their own hands. You got women who are becoming entrepreneurs, opening up businesses, helping other sisters become entrepreneurs. I'm seeing this. Why? Because I'm working with them. When people come to me and ask for money for their organization, they lowballing themselves, and I tell them that. Ask me for more. $250,000 ain't going to get you nowhere. Take the money. Ask for the million. Because you best believe on the north side, that's what they're doing. And people look at me like I'm crazy, like, oh, wow. I'm, yeah, you talk to a lawmaker. I legislate. I appropriate. $100,000 ain't going to work. $500,000 ain't going to work. We have to condition ourselves to ask for the million. Come on. Let me tell you. Right. So... Those are the conversations that I have. And anybody who's worked with me could tell you that. I could. Tell I didn't you get that. in this position to be politically correct. I didn't get in this position to be quiet and go with the status quo. No, I'm, I make my own move. I have my own mind. I'll take whatever comes my way. I'm used to it. Mm. And I'm still pissed that this representative called me weak because he would never be able to walk a second in my shoes. Come on. And they got poor white folks living in their district that they ignore. They turn their nose up at. They were pissed I called that out. But it's true. And white folks who are poor don't like to be associated with it. And we know this throughout history. That they would rather live in poverty, but not identify with it, as long as they feel more superior than black folks. Mm. You get what I'm saying? 100%. I'm going to tell you what. And that's who these people speak to. They speak to poor white folks and they feel down black folks because like, oh, you're living, you're better than them. Right? That's who Trump spoke to. And that's what they, that's what they were speaking to on that debate. And I called it out. And I ain't afraid to call it out. And I'm going to keep calling it out. Representative. But we are always last. Always last. And I'm tired of being last. Mm-hmm. I got three black boys. Three. Mm. I ain't doing it for a title. I ain't doing it for, for any type of hype. I ain't trying to be a part of nobody's club. I've always walked alone. Always. So when that happened to me that day, yes, I snapped off on him. Don't come and apologize to me after you already assaulted me. That and is. so I look at everything different. So I'm going to tell you, sis. Here go the lick. You ain't by yourself. That's all I gotta say. You are not by yourself, and I, I, you, you now have the bad signal. We coming to Springfield. The black people coming. The niggas coming. We coming to Springfield. You gonna turn around. You gonna look up in that chamber, and I want you to be like Steve. We like to let's negotiate the. Uh, let's have a beer summit. I want to have a beer summit with Steve. Uh. Uh, when we come down there. But, Representative, uh, you are not by yourself. And I think all of us who have heard this story are not going to allow it. Um, 
to sit as it is. So let's coordinate offline because uh, we don't want everybody to know what's going on. But I just want to tell you thank you for uh, bearing with me yesterday because yesterday got a little off the chain. Uh, today, um, you done took it away, and I think we got to close this thing up because there's a lot more going on. Uh, Representative Lakeisha Collins, thank you. Um, and you let us know how we can else we can be of assistance to you. Uh, this is the Maze Jackson Show. I want to tell you thank you. Uh, we're going to reach. We're going to let her go now, and we're going to keep on going. Um, I told y'all before we – I want y'all to – what's the matter? Uh, oh, we got callers? Let's go to uh, – you like that. We got callers. Callers, let's go to the live lines. Callers, you're on the Maze Jackson Show. That's a true call. He waited an hour to Shalom, time. shalom. Broke a What up, Israel? I forgot what I was calling in about, man. Man, man I already got some guys in Springfield. You know they got a ghetto right there. Guys coming home in Springfield. If you need somebody to knock on the door to stay. I think we need to do it together, bro. I think it. I think I ain't got no problem with that, man. I'm, I, I, all you guys said no. They don't need enough money. I just said the guys in Springfield already. That's all. Oh, but it's not, cool. not yet. But Israel, I need to talk to you about this whole thing. We need to make this a a caravan. But what's going on, my brother? I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm saying the man meet them see what happened behind closed doors. I was in a meeting yesterday with so called black contractor hooking them up with this development. Damn white man right in the middle of it. I'm like, oh no. Hell, this is me for black contractor. <laughs> man, they, and they got us. They got us, man. Not us, got them. They ain't never got me. They got, they know, they, they know the secret. I mean, they know these Negroes ain't those Negroes, not us. No brother Tyrone and me and you gonna stand up. But I'm saying these other brothers are in the room getting they damn fingers pointing in their face and actually some of them working under the desk and they they urinate they, they sit down when they urinate they sit down I'm gonna leave that alone ooh you bogus you bogus for that I heard you no you I ain't they bogus you said they sit down to pee I heard you I heard you Israel yeah, I, I see how you doing Shalom. that there. ain't the Shalom Shalom I see you dropping them bombs on hey, the man, people I'm still, hey but that was my other life he found out my other life with this lady <laughs> doing this to this lady <laughs> You know my past life, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I know I you. Think, have... I fifty cent, you say, motherfucker. Oh, uh, y'all done just let, we done let it all ride today. All right, that's my man Israel today. Uh, we got anybody else on the line? Let's go to the live line. Call you on the Maze Jackson show. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm a little ticked off, but I'm all good. What about you? Oh, uh, I'm I'm there with you. Y'all have to let. I'm gonna have to find out where you're going. I might take a ride up there too for some of my days off. Uh, we, let's get everybody's day off, and we know we got to do it between Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we got to figure that out, and then let's 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 all do it and know that we're going to do it. They're going to be out of there in April, so we got to get it done sooner rather than later. Uh, but what what you think about this white man walking up on this sister like that? I mean, after I seen the disrespect for um, Lori Lightfoot and how the uh, the lack of response to protect her. I'm, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not. I'm, I'm not surprised at all. But the thing is, like what you said, are we gonna let them get away with it? That'll further embolden them to, to to keep doing it with no consequences. That's what I'm telling you. I I would be mad if somebody stepped to Ruth so, and put their finger in her face. She might bite it. Though. Yeah, we in the same boat. Come back with that a nut. Same process, so. <laughs> mm. It's that. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for your call. Reese, we got on that line. Call oh, it. You on the Maze Jackson show. Call it. Hey, Maze, this is Sean Gowder. How you doing, brother? Uh, Big Sean, man. I ain't heard from you in a long time, man. I thought you quit us, dog. No, nah, brother, I would never do that. Um, I was just tied up for a little while. Uh, Miss Ruthie, it's a pleasure meeting you. And Brother Reese, it's, it's also a pleasure meeting you. Good morning. Brother Maze, I said to you. I got $500 on Freedom Land. Mm. Freedom Land is where if we need to get to Springfield, we got a place where we can house our people when they get there. So we're not giving them hotel money. Ooh. I got $500 on Freedom Land, Maze. Let's talk about it because when we come to Springfield, we got to house our people. And you know to get anything done, you have to be there longer than a day. Yep. So, so if we're going to pay the long haul, we need Freedom Land. Let's talk about it. Love you, brother. And I'm still here with you. And I will never leave you or your wife, if I see you out there, a fool better not come near y'all out here. That's what I'm talking about. It's the Maze Jackson Show. Sean Cowder. 
Big Sean. Sean a big dude too. See the muscle dudes. I want to be like you know how in the you movie. Don't need to be big, man. You got all that. You got Big Swill. You got Tommy. You got you just. <laughs> big you know Swill ain't Big Swill no more. Big, though. big Swill skinny. Big Swill. Hey, but he's still Big Swill. You know you just like, so you good, man. You you know you like hey man. You just stand there. They be like I wish you. I, I wish you would, man. Now listen, when your car got took, I called Squill. He didn't know. So he was like, I gotta go. I gotta hang up. Ain't nobody messing with Jackson. And hung up. I swear. I swear. He was ready to lock it up and leave. He was ready. And hey, what like, you gonna do? What you gonna you gonna run out the road, dog? I appreciate hey, you. Though. He was ready. He's like, he's like, oh man. Oh no, dog. I'm gonna tell you. There up. would be no Maze Jackson if there was no Big Swill. Big Swill handled the business back in the day that allowed me to. Navigate and I was the help and he was the hurt. Uh, one more question. We got anybody else on the line? All right, that is the Mace Jackson show on that topic. I want to play this as I we gonna hit the, we doing Black History is this you this next generation of Black leaders in politics. Yeah. Uh, we can ready to play this again because I need to talk about what I want to put everything together. Uh oh, I want to put everything together. Uh, as to what happened. Hold on. So, I'm going to play this again, one last again. Then I'm going to talk about what happened at the state. I want to talk about the divisions in the state. And then I want to talk about how what these state politics could potentially play out to our demise in the ward map fight. Mm. So let me play this again because I want y'all to understand how we are treated or reacted to. And I know y'all love when I play this. I just thought this was, I, I just can't get over this video just because of the response. Here we go. Reese, you got me uh, ready. Let's go um, over and over again. I appreciate the question. Uh-oh, what's in it for the black people? That's right. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, my name is Mays <laughs> Jackson, uh, and I just have a question. I wrote it. Um, as next generation black leaders, right? Because when I came here, this was about the next generation of black leaders. Um, I want to know what the future of what you all see as the future of black Chicago, particularly as I hear us continually talking about people of color, and as we're watching this people of color debate play out in the city council and additionally where do you believe we fit as it relates to the rights of undocumented immigrants to vote uh in the in city in municipal elections because we're seeing it happen around the country and it is part of the disenfranchisement of black people not people of color so i'd like to hear a response to that mm. Mm. <laughs> it was ha ha hell who wants to take a crack at that? We need to time the clock. We need to be a counter. I think May's question was loaded, and I, I, if he could repeat it, I could try to be helpful. I think. Okay. So my question, which I believe is the primary question that needs to be asked this cycle, which is where do you, where are you at when it comes to uh, undocumented voting mm -hmm. in the black in these elections? I think it's important. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, the the political question. I'm going to get into. The oh, we're watching it play out right now. Play this in the city council. All right. So Th that's thank you, Mays. We got it. Did he cut me Mays, off? Was sure that being I'm rude? Your, your question completely, but I'll I'll just speak personally. Um, look, I, I've got a a five year old um, son and and two and a half year old twins who I'm raising right here. Who will have no in place. The city of Chicago. I love this city and I love this county. Right. That and we're invested into the city and this county. How? What you got um, in? Our, our, they and our other children are the future. What the fuck of, is this? Of Chicago and of Cook County. They are the future. And so we have to invest in them. We have to invest in them. And it starts from the very beginning. Um, Listen to the end uh, of this, though. When it comes to your question about uh, non citizens, I mean, we're, we're going to help everyone. That's it's what the government black is here for. Period. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into uh, the the political question. I'm gonna get into the 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 moral. Go ahead, sir. The direct uh, mm -hmm. the future of uh, of Chicago and of Cook County. They are the future, and so we have to invest in them. 
we have to invest in them. And it starts from the very beginning. Um, uh, when it comes to your question about uh, non-citizens, I mean, we're, we're going to help everyone. That's what government is here for, period. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into uh, the the political question. I'm going to get into the, the the moral issue in the in the in the moral answer. These are our fighters. This is who was at the forefront. This is who was picked to discuss the future of the next generation of black leaders in which they are not going to talk about what has to be the most pressing issue to us. Mm. Okay, so now let me point out a couple things. Um, first of all, the Democratic Party has just been fractured, almost broken at the point of broken. Did You see, You saw last week I was a little passionate about the J.B. Pritzker or Jesse White endorsing Anna Valencia. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, two days ago then, J.B. Pritzker came right behind and endorsed Anna Valencia as the opportunity to make history again. So now J.B. Pritzker has made history twice in his last two elections. The first time he elected the first black lieutenant governor. How'd that work out for us? The second time, he has now nominated uh, the first Latina, who does not speak Spanish, mm. Um as the as making history in the first in this gubernatorial race essentially now let me also talk about Vladimir Viegas who is betting and is playing chess The calculus for J.B. Pritzker is he does not have a challenger in the Democratic primary. He does not want to run with Anna, with Alexi Janulius, not for the Democratic primary. Well, for the Democratic primary, because mm -hmm. do you want to be standing up on the stage if you J.B. Pritzker next to Svelte? Do you want to be J.B. Mm -hmm. standing next to Alexi mm. on the stage? So people have a direct comparison of you and their future. So let's start there. JB is looking to the general election and who his running mate will be and how he will lead the ticket in November, not in June. So his decision is based on a long-term play. So what he decided to do was instead of trying to have J.B. Pritzker, I mean, have Alexi Janulius. He thinks that the woman of and look, the woman of color, because they don't make the distinction, is the opportunity to make history. So he's playing long ball. But what's happening in the black community right now, and the short term election, is <clears throat> the remap, which happens. During the referendum, Gilbert Viegas is adding into his calculations that by taking away Jesse White mm -hmm. and then replacing him with Anna Valencia, there really is no motivation besides Carrie Steele for black people to turn out. In the election that will be the most important for black Democrats who are in this remap fight. So check this out. So in the Democratic primary, the Democrats who will rely on black votes will be touting the history-making candidacy of Anna Valencia. Okay? That is the June, I mean, the June election. Mm -hmm. So this referendum that Gilbert Viegas and his team and the white progressives are saying and this is probably why they made the ultimate declaration of war yesterday. Because realistically, what is the motivating, what, what are black people voting for in the Democratic primary? What race do they care about? Besides Carrie Steele, right, you running to vote for JB? You're not going to, like, again, now at the same time, there's still David Moore. Right. Mm -hmm. My question and is, did David Moore get an opportunity to audition? Did he get an interview? Did he what was the process that the governor used 
to select his person. Now, I'm not sure. He could have just said, I want Anna Valencia, and that's fine. Mm. But now my question is, what do black Democrats in the midst of a ward map say to black voters? The Cook County Democrats chose all white men except for Tony Preckwinkle. Tony Preckwinkle. So they chose, they chose Fritz Kagey over mm-hmm. Carrie Steele mm-hmm. in, the, in the space. They chose Tom Dart over the black woman. Right? So now what you're saying, so now Tony Preckwinkle, who's not really popular, mm-hmm. is going to be encouraging black people to turn out to vote for her slate of who? Tony Preckwinkle is the lead black person on the slate. Karen Yarbrough is on there. So my bad. Karen Yarbrough is on the slate. But now what are black people coming out to vote for? At a time when you need black people to turn out. Now not for the governor, but for the ward remap. Because it happened all at the same time. It's all happening at the same time. But you stole the black people's hope. Not stole it. You. I get what you said. There's no motivation right now for black people to turn out in the Democratic primary except for Kerry Steele. And I think it's playing out on the streets when you see the petitions and everything else that's happening. Now, this isn't a diss and I know I'm biased. No, but you own the ground. So, you know. So, what I'm saying is the the level of disgruntledness of black folks is going to be compounded. Now tell me who do you think the black caucus in city council has that black people are going to run up the hill for. So you don't, we got screwed on cannabis gaming. We haven't won on anything this whole last four years. And now the, the task is going to be save us. But when I told you that we had an issue with black and Latino, which is really where the opportunity lies to motivate people. Let, let, let me give you, this is a precursor again to where we are. Cause all of these black elect, now I, frame this question right now. Now I want you to take everything I told you and I want you to understand that I asked Who are black people voting for in this, in Cook County? What reason do black, and for JB to be successful Mm long-term, he needs black turnout. Unless there is this overwhelming surge that comes from Latinos, but remember, they're not documented. So what they're asking you to do in this case is vote yourself out in the future. Mm. So now, Understand that to make this happen, they need the black vote. What do black people have from the Democrats in this election cycle? From the Democrats. Because the Democrats did not give you Kerry Steele. Mm-hmm. They said, no, we want someone else. We want a white man. The black woman told you, so now are we running out to support this black woman? And that black woman being pregnant. Who is the who is the Democratic Party leading their ticket with? Does JB inspire people? Is it Juliana? Oh. Are we going to see the Anna Valencia direct mail campaign? And is that going to what does JB Pritzker send to black people to make them vote for him? The whole little tax stuff, them handouts. What tax stuff? You know, no tax on the groceries, child care. See? Minimum wage. Meanwhile, this is the question that I asked one more time, and I want you to hear the people who are in charge making decisions and their um, response. Organizations that could be um, in frame the uh, question city and with what I told you. Just to think as a city about those barriers um, that um, are black people, people running to the vote polls the to same, vote the same old, same old um, over and over again. I appreciate the question. Here we go. Uh oh, what's in it for the black people? That's right. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, my name is Maze <laughs> Jackson. Uh, And I just have a question. I wrote it Um, as next generation black leaders. Right. Because when I came here, this was about the next generation of black leaders. Um, I want to know what the future of what you all see as the future of black Chicago, particularly as I hear us continually talking about people of color. Red wedding. We're watching this people of color 
debate play out in the city council? And additionally, where do you believe we fit as it relates to the rights of undocumented immigrants to vote uh, in the ci in city in municipal elections because we're seeing it happen around the country and it is part of the disenfranchisement of black people, not people of color. So I'd like to hear a response to that. Count mm. one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, Who's gonna go six, first? seven. Who wants to take a eight, crack at that? Nine, ten, eleven, That's twelve. May's question. We in war. Get ready so you don't have to get stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Now, let me show you the ultimate double cross. Mm. What did J.B. Pritzker promise electorally? He promised that he would be for fair maps. So whose side do you think that J.B. Pritzker gets on in the city of Chicago election? When they so remember, the Latinos have just teamed up with the white progressives. And said, we no longer want to do backroom deal maps in the deal. We want to let the people vote. Mm. Guess what J.B. Pritzker does? He supports the Latinos and the ability for people to, to make their own map. And so now the same black folks are going to get double crossed. Remember, I'm telling you this. Mm -hmm. When they put the, after this whole thing lays out. There's going to be a point when a reporter asks J.B. Pritzker, J.B. Pritzker, where do you stand in the city of Chicago? He's on those are city politics. Well, do you think that people should have the opportunity to pick their legend, their voters or should the voters pick their people? Well, I think the, the people should pick their pick the people that they vote for. I'm for fair maps because now they've given him an, like they've sat down and thought this out. Mm -hmm. How does J.B. Pritzker go against the people's map? That's why they spent the whole time making it the black caucus map because the black people can't even say freaking black. But really, that was always the city's It map. was always the city's map, and now they done made it Mike Casper. They don't even talk about Michelle Harris. Straight up. And when, it, when the question is posed... Where do you think J.B. Pritzker falls? He is not going to say, I'm for the backroom deal. And they are right now shaping the Black Caucus, the city's map, as a backroom machine politics deal, even though black folks ain't been in the machine. And then after we've given him everything, mm -hmm. he goes side against you. And guess what he'll do? He'll have enough money to pay for our silence. On our demise. And we will have given him the hammer to which to hit us with. And I'm getting laughed at for asking. Do y'all understand why this question about munis? So we remember the city key card. So what happens when the city key card becomes state? City Key allows you to vote. Remember, in mm. Chicago already, you can use the City Key. You don't even need it. You can vote in the school board election. So how are you going to tell me I can vote on the school board on the same ballot? Now, mind you this. The school board ballot comes up next go-round. So guess who's going to be? If they can vote, who is going to be like, oh, you can vote here, but you can't vote on that? Straight up. Give me the ballot. And then you're going to have, we're going to have people saying it's about our kids. Look, we're going to always do what's best for the rest. Remember, he didn't even say citizen. And I, and can I be clear? I am not suggesting that we should deny undocumented immigrants health care and all of that stuff. I'm saying they shouldn't get the right to vote. They shouldn't get the right to determine our, the, the direction of our country. You can eat, you can do whatever, but you want. Hold on, cuz. So we fought, and again, mark my words, whose side do you think J.B. Pritzker falls on on the, on the ward remap? He gonna go with the polls, and guess what they, guess what the black caucus, what the Latino caucus is betting on? That no, that no one cares about what happens to the black people. Do you think them progressive white people care about a map? They think they know what's best for us. Mm. So they not really concerned about what your opinion is. Because they know what's best for you.
We gave, we're giving them the hammer with which to hit. He got what he wanted out of us. He got what he wanted out of us. So now the question becomes, <laughs> why are you laughing, Ruthie? It's not funny. I was listening to the show yesterday, and Tyrone Muhammad said something that made me, made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And he said that J.B. Pritzker's election was just so that he can get his people in with the marijuana business. And I was like, what? Like, why would he say that? But then I started thinking back to him getting elected, and that was one of his, like, campaign things it was like lgbtq and it was about cannabis and so to see how it all played out i think tyrone muhammad is on to something like deeply and it's troubling because for a jb prisker to talk about backroom deals and all that what he think of anna valencia secretary of state candidate candidacy is so i just don't understand how they can pick and choose language they when can. it suits them because they can because again that's the whole game the whole game is to be able, can I finesse your ass? We are, we've been finessed, right? And it's like we've been finessed and convinced that that's the, hey, yo, it is what it is. And then it's like you can't even say nothing about it. Think about it. You Think about when I said what's, in, like, the, the craziest part is the people that are shutting me down or trying to shut me down are going to be the victims, I'm not elected. I'm not in a map. I don't, whoever it is, I'm going to figure it out. You will to lose your job. Let me just ask you a question. Does J.B. Pritzker support fair maps or does he support backroom deal maps? Because remember, he allowed, so he can he can use what he did. See, he couldn't do it in Springfield. So he lets the city do it, and then he supports it. Mm. He couldn't do it in Springfield because he would have lost all his support. But I definitely could screw y'all. Because what, what y'all going to do? And here's the last part I just want to point out. Because I think Cassandra nailed this down. So many black committeemen jumped on the Alexi Janulius bandwagon mm -hmm. before the governor made a decision. And because mm -hmm. they thought he had $2 million and that was going to be a button, you know, he was running around paying for everything. Well, now just think what $2 million means to Anna Valencia now. And so how many of those black elected officials that were upstanding Democrats that signed the loyalty pledge are going to jump ship on Alexi mm -hmm. and go work with the governor? Because the, the, cause they go where the work is. That's why it's all those different like factions. Or you got the Democratic, you got J.B. Pritzker has started mm -hmm. his own faction, him and Jesse White and Valencia. Then you got the Democratic Party of Illinois. Mm -hmm. You got the Cook County Democrats. And then you got Chewy. Cheesy Pete. You ain't, and our representatives at the table. Mm -hmm. Jesse White and Tony Preckling. From a civics perspective, how much weight does a loyalty pledge carry in today's? She going to find climate? out. She going to find out today. Is that a normal thing that people have to no, sign? It's, it, no, it, it is a lack of fear. So, like, you know, like, you know how there's people that have to make you sign a contract and there's people you just ain't going to cross? Okay. Because they can't stop nobody. They tried to get a contract. You know how you talk about don't nobody care about what them papers say? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what's about to happen to our loyalty pledge. Because right. in the meantime, they talking about we're, we're still wholeheartedly supporting the governor, but we're going to ask everybody to stick with Alexi. Yeah, no shade. Wow. Houseway ain't that what what Kanye say? Houseway, but it's like it ain't no rules until it benefits, and then it's like, well, you need to practice. Oh, they use ability. the rules. They use them same rules. That, well, they did that because they wanted the loyalty pledge because they wanted to force the black people to not to stick with the white guys and not go with what's in the best interest of their community. Right? The loyalty pledge was because all these white people, all these black people, was like, wait, you want us to support the white guys over the black people that had the qualifications? So you want. And so because Tony Preckwinkle is worried about the white folks coming for us, she like, I'll keep the Negroes in charge in cha check by this loyalty pledge. Because mm. I, I can't control the Negroes, but I can make them say, I'll, I'll paperwork them to death. <laughs> Remember, you signed this. But you ain't a gangster, though. Because if you're a gangster, you would hold it. The people would be scared. You wouldn't even need no pledge, right? Pledge. 
Yeah. You in the game. You what you got a violation coming. But can't nobody violate JB. Mm. But you she can't raise no money. Who who raise, who who is supporting the Democratic Cook County Democratic Party? They ain't got no money. That's they the, the candidates. The, the, they gonna the make candidates are their money. fundraisers. That's why I said they gonna make. The they have to have that. candidates to be their fundraisers because they, the the Cook County Democratic Party is paying mercenaries to get petitions. They're paying. They don't have the organization to go get them, so they're paying people to do it. Mm-hmm. That's the same thing, JB. Big bank take little bank. Meanwhile, Robin Kelly got the Democratic Party of Illinois, and they done took everything up out of that. Why does J.B. Pritzker and Robin Kelly not, why they beefing? Because uh, J.B. want to be the boss. And and it's like, man, I can't even, I could explain it to you, but I'll explain it But to it's you. like taking the money, like she can't raise money because they like icing, out, icing it out. Well, she shouldn't have been the chairman of the party because she couldn't raise no money locally anyway. Got it. Right, but it's like Durbin and them wanted to take the party. Mm-hmm. Right, they wanted to get the party away from Madigan and so they used oh, her. Oh, used the as black the, woman, right? But JB oh. had his own black woman in Michelle Harris. Remember? Oh, yeah, and they was they was and they ba- was battling back and, and forth. Picked- and he picked Michelle Harris. And when Michelle Harris lost, he cut out. But let's see how he plays Michelle Harris on this remap. See how they maze, maze. Meanwhile, maze. these same people telling you what they can't do. They, they. I'm a loyal Democrat. The Democrats ain't loyal to you. They ain't been. Show me when they have. They loyal to convenience. They loyal to white people. And they loyal to white people because they fear what white people will do to them. They ain't worried about what you're going to do. Mm. Do you think that's why Michelle Harris is having a difficult time in city council? Because she was with JB and the Robin Kelly crowd and them remember No, that? I think she's having a hard time in city council because she is a black woman and they don't have to respect her. Mm. There is no rule. There is nothing that black people have that white people are bound to respect. And I think if you watch how Michelle Harris, if you can compare Michelle Harris to Dick Mel mm-hmm. as a rules committee person, this would have never happened. The, 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 they, they, they like, we got a sweet lick. And, I'm, and it's not just Michelle Harris. It's we have a bunch of people that we instilled the fear of God in for years and years and years and years, and they don't know how to not be scared. That's it. That's all. And it's like, it, like the fact that, again, we have the option to be the United States or Ukraine, and we are opting to be Ukraine. Again, if, if you think that a certain person is engineering all this, and they get city business and their business is built on lobbying and having relationships with elected officials, then just like y'all said, Maze came, nobody going to give Maze no money. And when they told y'all to tell my clients, do the same thing for him. Mm-hmm. Dry it up. It's easy to talk shit when you can, you can finance the shit talking. But what happens when your client call you and say, man, you may, you, wait, you picked a fight with the Black Caucus? Well, that means that we lost 18 votes off of everything we got. Because we not voting on nothing you got. And don't let nobody need something. But that's not how we play. We have peacetime consigliaries in the time of war. It's the Maze Jackson Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Uh, May. Right. And y'all know it's the 50-year anniversary of uh, The Godfather too, right? Man. I'm still sunny. I got to get to... I'm, I be wanting... I'm... I'm Michael and Son with Sonny's attitude. It's like I be knowing, but mm-hmm. I be wanting to fight. I'm Look, glad, y'all. I'm glad we going to Springfield, though. You messing with all these people with Fredo loyalty. That's what's wrong with you. <laughs> I got all type of Fredos around me, right? <laughs> Fredo type loyalty. <laughs> Damn, Reese. It's the Maze Jackson show. Look, I'm through with that. It's so I'm done for today. What? Uh, I'm on my way to the power conference So I'm about to go check out Kiana Barber uh, It is legacy weekend We're going to Malcolm X College So I'll be there Y'all bring y'all weapons with y'all Come get some signatures Come check us out in this this power discussion panel I feel embarrassed Y'all be Oh it's today in the building Alright y'all It's the Maze Jackson Show So for Maze and Reese And Olga Rufy Mo See y'all next week I am the host of the Maze Jackson Show. Every single day we ask the question, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Maze Maze said. said. We out of here. Peace.
Let's get down to business and go ahead and address the facts, man. Life foot seems more lesbian than black. Rama Manuel is another case. He was just a tire. 50 closed schools left much to be desired. Police had internet naked on that body cam. They suppressed the footage so it couldn't touch a lot of hands. Reminds me of that 16 shots in that cover up. Both of them similar, so I went and dug it up. George Floyd killed, a lot of riots happened in the town. South side burned and they wouldn't let them bridges down. Grandmother sick, need a prescription and plus a couple groceries. You gon' have to travel just to get it now. COVID-19, now his shit ain't all up in this down. Not enough SBA loans to even give a round. So many failed businesses that you can put them in the path. If you don't survive the pandemic, it's gon' sit you down. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Shout out to Willie Wilson, hope one day you get to send it. We need some different players in the game to handle business. No, too many shady characters like Madigan and Blago. But when you really break it down, it's typical Chicago. City full of gangsters, it's what the land was built on. Same streets with hood legends, DNA gets spilled on. Carjackers out here lurking, trying to get they steal on. Looking for a block to put them Hellcat wheels on. Let this give bogus appraisals a red line. Car crackers out here getting.